Filipino time. <laughs> One thirty <laughs> Filipino time. <laughs> well, we had to uh, we had to take care of some things. But anyways, let's sing a few songs before we uh, go to our second part of the health message. Um, the joy of the Lord. I thought we'd sing um, some songs that are actually um, from Bible verses. You know, the words are taken from the Bible verse. So this one, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you guys know this song? I think so. Yes, that's it. Yes. Oh my, if you want to help, um, you can use the black mic. Oh, yeah. So you can, yes. So here, uh, yeah, the line, uh, this one, you just keep repeating the, the same line all throughout the first verse, okay? So here we go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. The word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. I need my glasses. The word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives the living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So this one, I wanted us to have fun with this one. And so for those of you that are familiar with this, um, we actually break up into two groups and then we sing different parts and put it all together. It sounds really beautiful. But the verse itself also, this song comes from 1 John 3, 1, which says, Behold what manner of love the Father has for us, right? And so if you can actually just go ahead and, um, yeah, go to the first slide. Um, we're going to sing it all together first, okay, for so that those who don't know the song, you can catch on. And then we'll divide after that, okay? Okay, so here we go. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Let's try it one more time. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Okay, let's pause here. So that side with Naomi, you guys are gonna sing Behold What Manner of Love. This side with me, you guys are gonna, we're gonna sing that we should be called, well, sorry, no, they're gonna start first. And then they'll sing on through the whole song. When they get to that we should be called, that's when we start singing um, Behold What Manner, okay? So they're going to start first. Here we go. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has 
has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Everyone, that we should be called. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Amen. Last song, Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. Yep. You guys, let's try this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. More to be desired than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey. testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, for to be desired and more, giving much wine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth Let's bow our heads for prayer. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for your words that give us life. Lord, thank you for loving us so much. And uh, Father, as we listen to the second part of the health message this afternoon, Lord, I pray that you will just keep us al alert and awake. And I pray that you'll bless James and Daryl as they share this afternoon. And just help us, Lord, to, to learn what you need us to learn and so that we can also share that with others. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath again, everyone. I'm glad that all of you came. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I believe by the grace of God that you'll be blessed in what we're going to be sharing. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, welcome. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, we're going to be talking about healing the heart. We're going to zero in on healing heart disease. But what I'm going to be sharing with you this afternoon is not just healing heart disease. We're going to be talking about diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. We're going to talk about a lot of things. So uh, in beginning, I uh, just want to share with you this promise that God gave to us in the Bible. It's in Deuteronomy, and I'm not connected. Wait a minute. Let me make sure. I'm sorry. I'm thinking I'm going here, and I'm like, all right, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me see. Where's my, let me play my slide there. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Can we um, maybe... Maybe, yeah, turn off the lights that are facing the screen there so that it's brighter. Oh, they're all together? How dark would it be if I was if all these lights were turned off? Okay, that's fine. Oh, there we go. How's that? Is that all right? 
I mean, what's on the screen is more important than my face, so we're, we're good with just what's on the screen. Anyways, you know, oh, yeah, look, look, I look pretty dark. Wow, so okay. All right. So, yeah, it's too bad there's, this is not separate, huh? I don't know. Is it? Oh, okay, so that's going to be clear on the, on the live feed. Okay, good. Okay, that's fine. So you can see that okay, right? Okay, good. So we're going to talk about healing the heart, and I'd like to start with this passage in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 15. This is a promise that God made to ancient Israel, but it's a promise to modern Israel today. That's us, okay? It says, and the Lord will take away from thee all, how much? All, all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of who? Egypt. Of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So God made a promise that if we are obedient to his commandments, and by the way, every promise and threatening of God is alike conditional. If you obey by faith, by the grace of God, God will fulfill his promise to you, right? Mm -hmm. But if you disobey, will God fulfill his promise to you? No, because you violated the condition upon which the promise is based, right? So we have to understand that. So my question is, why is it that the number one prayer request in all churches is for the healing of the sick? Is that a, is that a, a logical question? I mean, you know, God says that they're not, they're, we're not going to be sick. That's what the Bible says. But why do we have so much heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and all these problems? Why is that? You know, God gave a special message to Seventh-day Adventists because he doesn't want, to e want us to end up like this. That's not a good condition to be in. Now, I'm not saying this guy, you know, earned that or anything. All I'm pointing out is that God does not want us to be like that. He wants us to be healthy, and he wants us to be happy, and by his grace, he wants us to be holy. Okay? So let's look at another promise. This is Exodus 15, verse 26. It may be 25 and 26, but it says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. So this is the condition, right? Listen to God's voice, obey God. And then what did God say? I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Wow. So it mentions again the diseases of the Egyptians. How many of you are familiar with this? You know the King Tutankhamun exhibit? Okay, we've seen that in video. Some of us, has anybody actually seen that, that exhibit? Well, in 1975, I believe it was, I won an essay contest in the state of California when I was a seventh grader. And I, along with about four or five other young people, were privileged to be among the first group of Americans to view the King Tut exhibit in Los Angeles when it came to the United States in 1975 for the first time. And I was absolutely blown away by all the things that I saw there. But the Egyptians, we know that the Egyptians actually mummified their dead because they believed in reincarnation and they believed in immortality of the soul. American Medicine, November 18, 2009, it says, Hardening of the arteries has been detected in Egyptian mummies, some as old as 3,500 years, suggesting that the factors causing heart attack and stroke are not only modern ones, they afflicted ancient people too. So what did they die from? Heart attack and stroke. They died from heart disease. That's what the Egyptians had. They had heart disease. Now, the nameplate of Merimtha, 1213 to 1203 BC, in the Museum of An Egyptian Antiquities reads that when he died at approximately age 60, he was afflicted with atherosclerosis. That means clogging of the arteries. Remember the first lecture this morning, the surgeon pulling out that cholesterol out of the artery? Remember that? He was afflicted with atherosclerosis. That's what it was. Arthritis and dental decay. This is taken from ScienceDaily.com, a report on the findings of UC Irvine clinical professor of cardiology, Dr. Gregory Thomas, a co-principal investigator on the study. So they had heart disease, just like today. Heart disease was the number one killer in Egypt, and it's the number one killer throughout the entire world today. What was the diet of the Egyptians? 
What does the Bible tell us? In the book of Numbers chapter 11, and by the way, if you're taking note, write down Numbers chapter 11 and read the whole 36 or 38 verses tonight before bed, and you're going to be amazed. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, and he fed them, what did he feed them? Manna from? From heaven. Who did the manna represent? Jesus Christ, right? He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven, right? It was a symbol of Christ. And so he fed the manna from heaven, and they said, oh, you yeah, Lord, we, <laughs> we remember the, uh, the fish and the leeks and the onions and all of those nice barbecue times that we had back in Egypt. And Psalm 78 tells us, referring to this experience in Numbers chapter 11, it says, they tempted God in their heart by asking what? What were they asking for? Meat for their lust. Now we know the word meat in the Bible means either food or it means flesh food. In this context, it's referring to flesh food. Okay? Because they believed not in God and trusted not in His, what? In His salvation. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Wow. That's a pretty, pretty powerful statement, isn't it? And if I remember co correctly, in Psalm 69, it says, maybe it's not Psalm 69. There's a passage in Psalms that says, as a result of eating the flesh diet, God sent leanness into their soul. You can look up the word leanness into their soul. That's in Psalms also. I don't remember the reference. But we know that after raining manna from heaven, they complained, they whined, and they cried, and they said, we want flesh to eat. And Moses went before God, and he said, how can I feed over a million people? What am I going to do? And he says, he told the people, am I God? I cannot, I cannot feed you all that stuff. And so he cried to the Lord and the Lord said, Ye shall not eat flesh for one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, but for a whole month until it comes out your nostrils. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Burning fevers, heart attacks, thousands died as a result of the biggest barbecue ever recorded in history. Yeah. That's true, isn't it? She's laughing. It's true. It's the biggest barbecue in history. That's what the Bible says. But we know that God's original diet for man was not the flesh pots of Egypt. And we are told that those who use flesh meat disregard all the warnings that God has given concerning this question. They have no evidence that they are walking in safe paths. They have not the slightest excuse for eating the flesh of dead animals. Well, why is that? God's curse is resting upon the animal creation. Does the Bible back that up? Does the Bible say that God's curse is resting upon the animal creation? Huh? Okay, let's look in the book of Hosea. If you have your Bibles, Hosea chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, does that sound like the last days? They break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore, this is the result, therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. You see, God's curse is upon the animal creation as a result of man's sin because we have violated God's law. And that's the result. God's curse is resting upon the animal creation. Many times when meat is eaten, it decays in the stomach and creates disease. Cancers, tumors, and pulmonary diseases are largely caused by meat eating. This is taken from Councils and Diet and Foods, page 383. Question, how many of you have read the book Councils and Diet and Foods? Okay, next question, how many of you have a cell phone? 
Now, I'm going to make a point. You can download the Ellen G. White writings from the App Store or the Google Play Store for free. When I became a Seventh-day Adventist at 21 years old, I spent all my money in purchasing everything that I could get my hands on written by Ellen White about health, about prophecy, about the Bible. And I spent thousands of dollars purchasing all these books. And I had a huge library of just about everything she wrote. And now today, I don't have to carry those heavy books around like I used to in the Philippines. Actually, my back got crooked. I had to have it corrected, but um, that was a long time ago. But now you can download it to your cell phone. You can read everything she wrote right on your cell phone. It's absolutely amazing. So please download those writings. Councils and Diet and Foods, great book to read. Ministry of Healing, Councils and Health, we need to read these books. It will literally save you a lot of suffering and a lot of money if you get sick. The Temple of God. What is the Temple of God? Is it a building that you put a sign on? It's our body. You know, the book of Acts tells us that the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Acts 17, isn't it? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God. How? In your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. And what is the first angel's message? Fear God and do what? And give glory to him. Why? For the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the seas and the fountains waters. That's the first angel's message. And part of the everlasting gospel that is to be proclaimed by Seventh-day Adventists to the world is the health message that will prepare the way for the entering of the gospel. As you minister to the physical needs of people and help them recover from their diseases, their minds will be open and they will receive the truth, many of them. It is a mistake to suppose that muscular strength depends on the use of animal food. The needs of the system can be better supplied and more vigorous health can be enjoyed without its use. The grains with fruits, nuts, and vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good blood. That's taken from Child Guidance, page 384. It says these elements are not so well or so fully supplied by a flesh diet. Had the use of flesh been essential to health and strength, animal food would have been included in the diet appointed man in the beginning. You know, there's a, a film that came out, I think it was a couple years ago, called The Game Changers. Anybody seen that film? I don't have Netflix, but I've seen the, I've seen the video. And in this video, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jackie Chan, and all these other professional athletes are in the video, and they're telling how their athletic, improve, their athletic performance improved like five and tenfold as a result of eating a plant-based diet. And there's this guy that's called the Iranian, Iranian Hulk. It's this big guy, and he can actually flip a car over. And he's, he has a world record in pulling, I think, pulling the most amount of weight or deadlifting the most amount of weight or both. I can't remember. But powerful testimony. And these people are all vegan vegetarians. And Arnold Schwarzenegger in the video says, you know, we, we were led to believe as bodybuilders that we need to eat a lot of protein, a lot of meat, meat and, the, and the eggs and all this stuff. And he says, that is all a bunch of foolishness. He didn't use that word, but anyway, so you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> but even Arnold woke up to realize that, hey, the plant-based diet is where it's at. There's more protein in spinach than there is in flesh foods. Did you know that? But we were told, oh, but you know, we need to follow the, the USDA-approved food pyramid, which is in all the curriculum from junior high school all the way through university. And this is it. Oh, you've got to have your dairy products and, and, you know, your fish and poultry and, and your meat. And then you've got your legumes and your vegetables and your fruits and your, your grains and your oils. And, and we were also told that we need to drink our milk. I remember sitting at our table when I was younger and my mom would say, James, you need to drink your milk. And why do we have to drink our milk? Because we need... We need strong bones. because What is it that makes strong bones? 
calcium. Yeah. Did you know that a cow's milk is designed to grow a 900-pound beast? Think about it. <laughs> Did you know that? It is. It's true. <laughs> you guys are laughing. I don't know what you're laughing at. Totoo yan. That's true. Cow's milk contains 59 growth hormones, one of which is insulin growth factor 1. IGF-1 is a key factor in the growth of cancer cells. Each bite of hard cheese has 10 times whatever was in that sip of milk because it takes 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. I never knew that. Each bite of ice cream, how many of you like ice cream? Oh, come on. I'm not going to point fingers at you. Raise your hand. Everybody loves ice cream. I love ice cream, but I don't eat the, the dairy ice cream. I eat the non-dairy ice cream. <laughs> and we make our own ice cream. Frozen bananas, and we run it through the Vitamix, or we put it in the juicer, and it can grind up. It's really good. All right. And every swipe of butter has 21 times whatever is contained in the fat molecules in a sip of milk. This is taken from Rents.com website. 65 medical studies are listed as documentation. Now, here is a brief list of the disorders caused by the unnatural consumption of cow's milk and dairy by human beings. Gastrointestinal canker sores, vomiting, colic, stomach cramps, abdominal distension, you know, big tummy, intestinal obstruction, bloody stools, colitis, malabsorption, loss of appetite, growth retardation, diarrhea, constipation, painful defecation, irritation of the tongue, lips, and mouth, respiratory nasal stuffiness, runny nose, inner ear trouble, sinusitis, asthma, pulmonary infiltrates, skin rashes, these are the skin diseases, atopic dermatitis, eczema, seborrhea, hives, behavioral irritability, restlessness, hyperactivity, especially in children, headache, lethargy, fatigue, allergies, anemia in adults, and mental depression, etc., taken from nine medical studies found at organichealthandbeauty.com. So what's in a glass of milk? 135 million pus cells. Blood, feces, that means poop, up to 20 painkillers, antibiotics and growth hormones, bacteria and pathogens, IGF-1, bovine growth hormone, which contributes to increased diabetes risk, hormonal imbalance, immune system damage, early puberty in children, and cancer, acidic protein, which leaches minerals and calcium from the bones. Yes, because there's so much protein in order for the kidneys to process that. It has to take the calcium out of your bones. That's why the United States, which consumes more dairy than any other country in the world, has the highest incidence of osteoporosis than any other country. And Sweden and Denmark and those countries that, that also consume a large amount of dairy products have the same disease. But if you go to countries like Africa, where they don't really drink a lot of milk, osteoporosis is basically unknown. You say osteoporosis. What are you talking about? We don't have that here. <laughs> Toxic milk protein, casein, which contributes to breast cancer, kidney disease, arthritis, MS, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, asthma, just to name a few. Oh, but don't you know, Brother James, that they filter the milk so it's clean. Would you drink a bottle of milk or a glass of milk that's been run through that filter? No. No, thank you. T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., world-renowned scientist, researcher, uh, wrote a book called The China Study. It's about that thick. Completely documenting the damage that animal foods does to the body and how it produces cancer, heart disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and diabetes, and etc. And in the book, he said that casein, which is a protein that's in cow's milk, is the most relevant cancer promoter promoter ever discovered. That was one of his findings. And this is a man that in the early 60s went to the Philippines to give more meat and dairy to children to cure malnutrition. But he was on the wrong track. He didn't know during those days. But as he continued to research and to study over the years, he learned that this is the wrong approach. It's the plant-based diet that we need to cure these nutritional deficiencies and these diseases. Remember, cow's milk is for baby cows. Mother's milk is only for babies. Have you ever seen a 35-year-old man sit on his mom's lap and go like this? <laughs> of course not. It's ridiculous, right? 
But this guy says, oh, come on, Brother James, just cut out the middleman and let's get right down to business. Do you still think it's natural? Now you can laugh. Oh, she's laughing. Okay. There she is. Sabi ng bata, the child says, no, milk is good. Sige, diretso na. Go ahead. Maybe for thee, but not for me. Sorry. All right. Those who have received instruction regarding the evils of the use of flesh foods, tea, and coffee, and rich and unhealthful food preparations, and who are determined to make a covenant with God by sacrifice, will not continue to indulge their appetite for food that they know to be unhealthful. This is Councils of Diet and Foods, page 36 by Ellen White. God demands that the appetites be cleansed and that self-denial be practiced in regard to those things which are not good. This is a work that will have to be done before his people can stand before him, a perfected people. Wow. You mean to say that we really need to practice a healthy lifestyle in order to be overcomers? Okay, how many of you have a Bible? Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 11. Look at what the Bible says. Romans chapter 11, Paul is talking about ancient Israel, and today he's talking about modern Israel. In verse 7 he says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Kind of reminds me of Laodicea, didn't it? According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, what did David say? Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. Wow. I was just talking to a lady just before the meeting. He says, you know, Adventists are blind to these things. They have no clue that in order for them to give the loud cry, they have to practice the health message. I said, amen. He says, why is it that we as Adventists, we don't understand this? I said, I don't know. What does the Bible say? Because we're, we're asleep. All right, I'm finished with the introduction to the lecture. Are you okay? You ready for the lecture now? Okay. So remember, before we talk about disease, I want you to understand that a plant-based diet, along with exercise, drinking water, plenty of fresh air, sunshine, temperance, trust in divine power, these are very important things that you must have in place in order to get rid of this disease. I don't care if you jog a marathon every day of the week. If you're eating the wrong food, you're killing yourself. And if you're eating the right diet, but your only exercise is clicking the mouse of the computer and looking at videos, you're killing yourself. And you're fooling yourself. We have to practice the whole program. It's not just diet. It's about exercise. And by the way, my favorite exercise right now is playing pickleball. How many of you like pickleball? Have you ever played pickleball? Did you know that's the fastest growing sport in the United States? Oh, you talk about some serious fun and great exercise. It's kind of like tennis. It's a cross between tennis and, and ping pong. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I'll be playing tonight. Anyways, disease. Let's talk about disease. Disease, what is disease? Dis-ease, you're not at ease, right? Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Number one, first thing, why am I sick? Why do I have diabetes? What is it that's causing my diabetes? The cause should be ascertained. Number two, unhealthful conditions should be changed. And number three, wrong habits corrected. Okay? Number four, then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish 
right conditions in the system. Ministry of Healing, page 127. I hope I'm not yelling too loud. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm not angry, trust me. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I start talking to people, next thing I know I'm shouting, and they're like, you know, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> just got excited there. All right. So these are the things we need to do when we get sick. So nature is to be assisted in our effort to expel impurities. Another word for that is we need to do cleansing. Yeah. Did you know that cleansing or a... Or assi how do we assist nature? We cleanse the body. How do we? Did you know that cleansing is a biblical principle? You know the Bible says in Second Corinthians seven one, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. There are many things that God has put in nature that can cleanse certain parts of the body. Garlic, grapefruit, I don't recommend green tea. It does have ca caffeine in it, but the picture is a good picture, so disregard the green tea thing. Bitter gourd, we call that bitter melon or ampalaya in the Philippines. That's the only vegetable I don't like, sorry, but I eat it. Did you know I eat it anyways? You know why? Because it's good for the blood. It's a blood purifier, and I eat it like this. <laughs> That's only a joke. Spinach. Avocados, turmeric, we call that luya dilao in Tagalog. Yellow ginger, it's good for the body. All right, how many of you have heard of Bragg's? You know, Bragg's liquid aminos, Bragg's apple cider. Okay, Paul Bragg was the one that started the company. His granddaughter, Patricia Bragg, runs the company now. I don't know if she's still alive, I have no idea. But anyways, this is Patricia Bragg at the top. This is her, her grandfather, I think, her dad or her grandfather, one of the two. Anyways, he wrote a book called The Miracle of Fasting, proven throughout history for physical, mental, and spiritual rejuvenation. He says, fasting is the greatest remedy, the physician within. That's what he called it. All right. So fasting is mentioned 74 times in the Bible. It puts the body in a condition where all the vital force of the body is used to flush out the causes of body miseries. In other words, this is what assists the body to expel impurities, which is what inspiration tells us. I don't know why I have two of those slides. One of the best ways that we can cleanse the body is through juice fasting. How many of you ever experienced juice fasting? Okay, how many of you ever experienced just juicing? Okay, good, good. So you're familiar with that. So one of the juices that we like to start out when we do a fast is carrot apple juice. This is for non-diabetic patients, okay? Diabetic patients is a totally different program, and I'm going to tell you what that program is in this lecture so that you know what you can do to reverse type 2, type 2 diabetes. That's what we're, I'm not talking about type 1. Now type 1 can be greatly improved, but type 2 can be totally reversed with this program, okay? And I'm going to show you evidence of that in this lecture. All right, so carrot apple juice. We just did a program for a lady with diabetes, and I'll tell, the, tell you about that in just a few minutes, but when we juice the carrot apple for her, I used only one apple with a bunch of carrots, and then I dilute that juice, uh, only like four ounces of carrot apple juice and four ounces of water, so it's very diluted, very low sugar, hardly any sugar, okay, because it's watered down. But for non-diabetics, a full glass, eight to 12 ounces of Carrot apple juice is a great juice. And you can use a juice extracting machine like these. These are the cheapy kinds. I don't use those, but they are inexpensive and anybody can use them and they do work. Uh, they're called the centrifugal juicer, okay? It spins and it slices the produce. It ejects, they call them pulp ejectors. It will eject the pulp out one side of the machine and out of the little spout will come the juice where you catch it in the cup and that's what you drink. You can add some greens. You can add celery, you can add greens, you can add sugar beets, you can add broccoli, you can make green juices, orange juices, red juices, all different kinds of juices. I don't know why these slides doubled up on me. All right, but uh, we can also do the like lemon drinks with ginger. Uh, you can do carrot, uh, tomato juices, beet juice. The green juices are the most efficient and most powerful form of medicine on the planet, period. 
If you're a diabetic, you want to reverse your disease, you need to drink green juice every single day. Pure green juice. Okay? And when you do a fast, predominantly green juices. If you're drinking carrot apple juice or beet juice, half water and half juice. Okay? Now you have the program. We're going to talk about the specifics as we go on. Green juices are number one. And sometimes we like to add a little lime or a little lemon. I do not recommend juicing pure fruit juice. I will tell you why. It's too much sugar. And it strains the pancreas. And the pancreas says, Oh, why did you do this to me? What's going on? Now we have to produce a whole bunch of insulin. And if you're not exercising, it spikes your blood sugar and it goes through the roof. That's not good. Now, if you're exercising a lot, let's say you want to drink a big thing of orange juice, pure orange juice or pure apple juice, and you're going to go out and play two hours of pickleball, like what I do, then that's okay. Your body's going to burn that sugar in no time. Not a problem. But as a rule, we add fruit juice just to make the green stuff taste good. All right? So let's talk a little more about fasting. The University of Southern California came out with a study the scientists there at the university found that fasting for three days can have a significant improvement in your body's health. The six-month study was done on both mice and humans who are currently going through chemotherapy, and they noticed a significant improvement in their health as the white blood cells and other toxins in the body were flushed out. Notice the same language, different, different study, but the same findings. It was flushed out over the course of the fast. We call that cleansing. Okay? In computer science, you, computer science, you call it defragmenting the hard drive. Got it? Basically, when you fast for a prolonged amount of time, your body uses the stored glucose, fats, and produce ketone bodies that are especially good for your brain to keep you going and you flush out anything that your body doesn't need, like damaged cells and toxins. This is the reason why we do fasting. When you're eating regularly, harmful toxins in the body can attach themselves to these fats and live on. But when you fast, your body is forced to lighten itself. It's like the survival of the fittest. Only the strong survive. PKA is the key gene that needs to shut down in order for these stem cells to switch into a regenerative mode. It gives the okay for stem cells to go ahead and begin proliferating and rebuild the entire system, explained Longo, which is one of the scientists that did the study, noting the potential of clinical applications that mimic the effect of prolonged fasting to rejuvenate the immune system. And the good news is that the body got rid of the parts of the system that might be damaged or old, the inefficient parts during the fasting. Now, if you start with a system heavily damaged by chemotherapy or aging, fasting cycles can generate literally a new immune system. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is incredible. And this, this study came out just a few years ago. What, three, four years ago? When I read that, I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I got to put this on slide. So what are the health benefits of fasting? We're going to talk about the rules, the do's and don'ts of fasting. Before we get into that, we're going to talk about what fasting does in the body. Fasting gives the digestive system a rest. Instead of grinding all that beautiful food that we just ate, when you're fasting, the body says, oh, now I get to rest the stomach, and, and now I need to concentrate on these issues and these issues. Oh, the liver, the liver needs cleansing. The lymphatic system is a bit plugged up. We need to deal with that, and I need to get rid of this and rid of that. And so the body can start focusing on the underlying issues that create disease. That's what happens during fasting. It can help you to beat addictions. Oh, you know, I just can't stop eating my Snicker bar, Snickers bar three times a day. Or I can't stop drinking coffee. How are you going to get rid of that? Fasting. Reboot the immune system. Clean out the liver. It is a great way to start a healthy diet. Oh, I just, every time I open the fridge, I just, <gasps> <sighs> take the stuff out of the fridge. Oh, I'll tell you some stories. 
It can reduce your hunger levels. It can promote the detoxification process. It whitens the eyes and clears the complexion. It can reduce high blood pressure, and it can boost the immune system. Now, there's a book which I highly recommend, a fantastic book, an easy read and very, very amazing book, really good book. In addition to reading Ellen White's books, I recommend this book as well. It's written by Dr. Joel Furman. How many of you have heard of Dr. Joel Furman? He's all over YouTube. The man is, is like, <laughs> he's like way ahead of his time as far as medical doctors. Very open-minded individual. He wrote a book called Fasting and Eating for Health. And I read this book and I was like, shh, underline, underline, underline. Wow. While medical treatments, he writes, page 120, while medical treatments aim at reducing the symptoms and may address some discrete areas of disease, they do little or nothing to remove the underlying illness or stop its progression to an untimely death. On the other hand, fasting treats the entire body. In addition to aggressive dietary changes, and in the context of this statement, he's talking about a plant-based diet. Okay, that's what he's talking about. He says, a physician-supervised fast, and he's talking about long-term fasting, more than a week, like 10 days, 12 days, 14 days, 3 weeks. Okay, that's what he's talking about. It can be utilized to bring a patient to a new level of cardiac safety. He's talking about heart disease patients. Fasting in conjunction with optimal nutrition. Oops. A little delayed there. Come on now. Oop. <laughs> okay, it's not cooperative. Let me, let me just fast forward here. Yeah, with optimal nutrition before and after the fast, offers the ability to undo the damage done to the body by the rich diets of modern societies. Through therapeutic fasting, a patient is able to reverse a cardiac condition quickly without the need for invasive medical procedures. What is he talking about? Angioplasty, bypass surgery, stents. Okay, that's what he's talking about. The results I have seen in patients using this approach have been spectacular. Fasting allows the body actually to remove the plaque from within the blood vessels and to heal itself in the shortest amount of time. A plant-based diet in conjunction with a properly conducted fast most often leads to a total recovery or a vast improvement in hypertension and angina. That's taken from page 111 and page 112, Fasting and Eating for Health by Dr. Joel Furman. So there we have it from a licensed medical doctor who has been fasting his patients for years. Now, what did God tell us as a church a hundred years ago? In many cases of sickness, the very best remedy is for the patient to fast for a meal or two. So there's one kind of fasting. We call that intermittent fasting. In other words, oh, I'm not going to eat lunch and dinner today. I'm only going to eat breakfast, and then tomorrow I'll eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner again. She says that the overworked organs of digestion may have an opportunity to rest. We just, we just read about that, right? A fruit diet for a few days, so here's another type of fasting, only fruits for a few days. Maybe you'll just eat nothing but fruits for like three or four days, or two days, right? Has often brought great relief to brain workers. We call them office workers, uh, you know, people like that. Many times a short period of entire abstinence from food, and that's what I'm talking about in this lecture. We call it juice fasting, even water fasting. Entire abstinence from food, a short period of entire abstinence from food, followed by simple, moderate eating, has led to recovery through nature's own recuperative effort. There you have it. You see, God identifies three kinds of fasting that will help people who are sick to recover. One, skip a couple meals. Number two, fruit fasting for a few days. It could be three, four, five days, even a week. It's not going to kill you. It's just fruit, right? And number three, total abstinence from food for a few days or a short period of time. 
And that's what we do. We're going to talk about the details. We're going to get into the, the nuts and bolts of this, so bear with me. And then we will have question and answer. At the conclusion of everything we're going to talk about and what we're going to show you, we will have plenty of time for question and answer. So hold your questions. Write them down. They might even be answered during the lecture. We'll see. And if not, we'll, we will entertain your questions. Okay? And somebody's sleeping here. Hello. Okay. It's not working. Froze up on me here. Uh oh. Mm. There we go. Okay. So during a fast, the natural process of toxic excretion continues, and the influx of new toxins is reduced. This is what happens when you're fasting. This results in reduction of total body toxicity. The energy usually, usually used for digestion is redirected to immune function. That's what the uh, University of Southern California discovered many years later, right? Cell growth and eliminatory, uh, redirected to immune function, cell growth and eliminatory processes. The immune system's workload is greatly reduced and the digestive tract is spared any inflammation due to allergic reactions to food. Due to a lowering of serum fats that thins the blood, tissue oxygenation is increased and white blood cells are moved more efficiently. Fat stored chemicals such as pesticides and drugs are released. Physical awareness and sensitivity to diet and surroundings are increased. Due to the effects of fasting, a fast can help you heal with greater speed. Cleanse your liver, kidneys, and colon. Purify your blood. Help you lose excess weight and water, flush out toxins, clear the eyes and tongue, and cleanse the breath. This is taken from Prescription for Nutritional Healing by Drs. James and Phyllis Balch, page 548 to 550. And then they say, in an effort to achieve optimal health, one must do three things. Number one, stop the toxins from entering the body. In other words, change your lifestyle, specifically your diet. Number two, Internally cleanse the body via eliminatory uh, elimination organs uh, such as fasting and colon, colon, liver, and kidney cleansing. We'll talk about that. Number three, nourish the body in order to build up the immune system. These are the three important things that we must remember and which occur when we are doing a fast. All right, so let's talk about the specifics of fasting. We're going to talk about the five channels of elimination. These organs of elimination are, number one, the largest organ of, of elimination is the skin. We sweat through the skin. And, and then what is, the, what is the, um, uh, the commercial industries? They make these things that you put underneath your arm to stop the, the, the flow of perspiration. They call it antiperspirant. No wonder why we have so much breast cancer in this country. Ladies? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the soft tissue, you know, right, right here goes right in. And then bad diet, bad lifestyle, and we have breast cancer, right? So we need to exercise. That's why exercise is so important. You need to sweat those toxins out, okay? Number two, the liver processes everything you put on your skin, ladies. And everything you put in your mouth goes right to the liver before it hits the bloodstream. Then the kidneys... Got to drink lots of water, 8 to 10 glasses a day minimum, even if you're juicing, minimum. Number four, the lungs, fresh air, aerobic exercise, right? The colon, proper bowel movements. Do you know we're a nation of constipation? That's true. Because most people poop once a day, once every two days, once every three days. No wonder why we have backache, headache, uh, you can't sleep at night, restlessness, nervousness, and our breath stinks terrible, and our underarms is absolutely horrible because our bodies are toxic. We're not letting the poisons come out. And why are we constipated? Number one, the intestine is so dry because you don't drink enough water. Number two, you don't have enough fiber in your food. You eat too much cooked food. You don't need enough salads and fruits to help push that stuff through, and we don't exercise enough. That's why we're constipated. We met some ladies in the Philippines, sisters. They pooped once a week, and they had all kinds of health problems. 
we flush their intestines out and they said, oh, my headaches are gone. I sleep good at night. I feel so much energy. I feel good. I said, yeah, because you flushed all the garbage out. Now you need to change your diet. What was their diet? White rice and fish. Fish and white rice. White rice and fish. So we want to get rid of the excess baggage that we're carrying around by cleaning out the intestine. Here's a picture of a, a healthy colon. We have the uh, small intestine where absorption takes place and a little bit more takes place in the large intestine and then out the door. Here we have the healthy colon, the large intestine. This guy's got a really large, large intestine, doesn't he? But then something happened over here. And he's not just sucking it in. He's just, you know, showing the difference. He cleaned out all that stuff that's all backed up inside his intestine that was causing diverticulitis, colitis, uh, polyps, all kinds of stuff. So we got to clean out the intestine. And one of the best ways that we can cleanse the colon is through colonics or enemas. Notice this person, uh, stage 4 diabetes, neuropathy is present, which is deadening of the, uh, the nerves in the legs and the extremities of the body, which also leads to impotency in men and partial blindness, if not total blindness. And uh, day number one of juice fasting and colon cleansing. Day number four, complete tissue regeneration in seven days. Juice fasting and cleaning out that gut. No medication. We use this little device called an enema. That's one way to do a, a, a flush of your intestine. We take two or three bags of water, not one bag all at once, but as much as you can hold in, jump on the toilet, let it out, reinsert the tip, more lukewarm water into the intestine, let that out, clear all the food out of the body, now you're ready to begin juice fasting. Okay, That's what we do on the first morning of a juice fast. We flush the intestine. The other way that we can do it is by using a colonic board, which is a relaxed, here's one of our patients here, this lady. Here's our colonic board. Brought it on the airplane over there to the Philippines. Got a little cushion. You slide up to it, and the tip goes in the rectum, and everything just goes water in, stuff out. Water in, stuff out. This is the cheap way to do it. You can pay a lot of money and go to the one of those, you know, really expensive machines where you watch the stuff go through this glass tube. It's all lit up, and you know that's just to just to show you that you're getting your money's worth. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, why would they light that thing up? They want you to see what's. They want you to see the parasites and stuff coming out. Okay. All right. We had a man come to us years ago. Uh, he's an elder of a Seventh Day Adventist church. Really dear man. He called me up one day. Brother James, help! I have arthritis. I'm in pain. My whole body. I cannot work. His whole body was in excruciating pain. He was diagnosed with a lung infection. We didn't know that until after he had done the 10-day cleanse program at our place. He had rheumato advanced rheumatoid arthritis. He was on the maximum dosage of painkillers and anti-inflammatory drugs, and it was not even phasing his pain anymore. Excuse me. He was desperate. He came to us. We put him on a 10-day cleanse. First, we started him out with a three-day juice fast. Carrot, apple juice... Uh, some green stuff, pineapple with some green stuff, and celery, and beets, and all of those wonderful things. And, and, and then, on day number four, we, we fed him some raw foods. We just let him eat salads and some fruit. And he was still in pain. I said, hmm, this is a pretty bad case. So I prayed. I said, Lord, what are you going to do with this guy? And the Lord said, put him on a water fast. Now, I've done water fasting. I did a one-week water fast many years ago because, you see, although I became a Seventh-day Adventist Christian when I was 21 and changed my diet within weeks of it learning the truth by reading Ellen White and the Bible, at 23, I was a dying man. I could hardly walk. I was adrenally exhausted. exhausted. My adrenal glands were shriveled up. I had no energy. I was four times more toxic in the liver than the average person that was from cocaine and methamphetamines and marijuana and all this other nasty stuff I was doing. And so the, the naturopathic physician that put me, who was also a chiropractor at the time, 
put me on a one-week juice fast with two colonics a day, one in the morning and one in the evening. And man, I tell you, on day four, whoa, I feel energy again. I can walk. I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm 80 or 90 years old and that I'm dying. And it literally saved my life. And that's how I got into the kind of work I'm doing today in helping other people with their health issues. It was through experience and through personal study and prayer and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's how I got to where I am today. And I have a long ways to go, trust me. All right. So day number four, uh, day number five, I was impressed to put them on a water fast. So I said, we're going to put you on a water fast because I'm not satisfied with the results of the first four days. So day five, six, seven, eight, I put him on water fasting. And when you're water fasting, you only stay in bed and you drink lots of water. I do not recommend people to do water fasting unless you have studied it and you know what you shall and shall not do while water fasting because it's a whole different level than juice fasting. Okay? Now, we've done juice fast for many, many years. M one week, five days, three days. But water fasting, you really need to be careful. Okay? And I do not recommend doing any longer than five or seven days maximum. Seven days is pushing it. I did seven days. I was desperate. Okay? And it really helped me. Amazing. But anyways, at the end of the water fast, he said, you know what? All the pain is gone except for my shoulder and my arm. Still lots of pain. I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is it? He said, probably like a 7 or 8. Still lots of pain. I said, okay. No problem. So we use the 10s. It's, a, it's a, just a little device that has a 9-volt battery and kind of electrocutes the person a little bit. It's got these little pads, you know. And what it does is it stimulates the nerves. It stimulates circulation is what it does. It's just a natural little thing, you know. And uh, they use it in, in some clinics. And so I let him use that, and, and then I said, look, I want you to continue juicing after you go home, and I want you to do coffee enemas every day for the next couple weeks. Now, during the cleanse, we do what's called a coffee enema, and you're probably like, well, what? Coffee enema? Okay, so um, coffee enemas help the body to release toxins from the liver. It brings the toxins that are deep inside the fatty tissues of the liver and pulls them out as a result of the chemical constituent of the coffee. It's a retention enema. We take 32 ounces of, of organic coffee and uh, we put that lukewarm coffee in the bag after having flushed the intestine of all the solids. We uh, do what's called a retention enema. We hold that in for 13 minutes and it goes into the liver, and it pulls those toxins out and flushes them out when you sit back on the toilet and let everything out, okay? So we do that during a cleanse. Very effective. I do not recommend drinking coffee because that's going to stay in your body. The coffee enema is going to come out, okay? And it does detoxify and cleanse the liver. We've had patients with hepatitis, completely cleared of hepatitis, doing a 10-day cleanse and follow-up coffee enemas, and they were clear, and they went back to work, okay? These were people that were sent home from working abroad, back to the Philippines. These are the breadwinners, no job, in debt, up to their eyeballs, and they were desperate. And so I put them on this program, and they got well. And another guy, a pastor, he said, I have hepatitis, don't tell anybody. Uh, I'm not going to tell you his name. But nevertheless, he went through the program, and it reversed his disease as well. And so they're functioning normally, no problems. So coffee enemas are very effective for cleansing out the liver. Um, this man, after 10 days, everything was good except for that one arm. After a few weeks, he completely recovered. Make a long story short, he stuck with the diet, the juicing, and uh, living a strict lifestyle. And then his daughter was getting married in the United States. And so he and his wife came over, and uh, they attended the wedding. And then they went to eat at the restaurant, and another restaurant, and another restaurant. And they ate a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And when he got back to the Philippines... Brother James, help. I told him, mug si 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 brad. I told him, repent, brother. <laughs> I was joking. I said, you know what you need to do. I said, you don't need to come here. Just do some juice fasting, man. Do what you did before. Okay, okay. I said, and do the coffee enemas. Clean out your liver. He went right back to where he was. No more pain. Everything's fine. And now he's a strict health reformer. No more fooling around. You know, some of us are, we have to learn through suffering. I happen to be one of those kind of people. We call that matigasang ulo sa Tagalog, hard-headed. Yeah, that's me. All right. 
So I'm going to show you a video. This is a man that we met in our house-to-house -house efforts just across from where we live in the country, in the Philippines. And this man had rheumatoid arthritis very, very bad. And he was in a lot of pain. And this is the video. I hope the sound will work. Let's see what happens. Let's try. Oh, there it is. Good afternoon. We're here with uh, Kuya Mario. Uh, he went through our 10-day uh, cleanse program. Actually, he was at our place for 12 days. And he had an uh, extreme case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, although he's not completely recovered, pero maraming improvement. Ano? So, dati, hindi pwede ma-umakyat yung kamay. Bef taas, taas. Before, he cannot lift his hands. Y sige. Oh, yung, yung isa. Oh, ito, ito, ito. Yo, unboxing pa. <laughs> oh, yeah, ito. Kaya ba? Oh, oh yung dalawa, dalawa. Sige. Oh, now he can lift both his arms. At saka, pwede nakalakad na yung ano? Okay, so... A little bit. Yeah, he can walk a little bit, and uh, he's doing much better. Yung asawa niya, si ati Mel Melda, no? Melinda. Mel Melinda. Uh, my high blood, ano, when you came to our place, di ba? At saka, my gamot, ano, for high blood. She's taking maintenance medication for high blood pressure every day. Na yung, ikaw pagsunod yung diet niya, ano? Kasi yeah, kasi siya sumunod, she's following his diet, which is the vegan vegetarian Genesis 129 diet. And, uh, ano ningari sa yo? Oh, you see? I'm not drinking my medicine anymore, she says. Yeah, it's, it's one month already, and she's not taking any more medication because the high blood pressure is gone because she changed her diet with Kuya Mario. So, nayong, yung kayo ay. Mayaman sa kalusugan, ano? You're rich in They health. They're rich in health. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So, here's another testimony. This lady came to us years ago. She was referred through a pastor friend of mine and her dad, and, and her dad, to our place. Her name is Hazel. And she came, and she posted her testimony on Facebook. And she says, thank you, James and Daryl, for your very warm accommodation, uh, for the cleansing program, and I can still remember the cold breeze and fresh air. I have been suffering from stomach pain for four years on and off, but it became worse when I came back to Philippines. I went for ultrasound and found that my gallstones were growing bigger compared to last year. I cannot take the pain in anymore as it worsens day by day. My doctor recommended to remove the stones by operation. They're going to take her gallbladder out, okay? But my father advised me to go for further for natural option. Through Pastor Rodell, who's our friend, he introduced these lovely couple who serves in healing ministry at their local church, Seventh-day Adventist, Louisiana. I never felt like a stranger to them. Every day they prepared fresh fruit and vegetable juices. Sounds ew, but they made it so yummy for me. I never felt hungry as I was stuffed with glasses of juice almost every half an hour. They call it juice fast. This helps to rest the digestive system and let the body absorb the nutrients faster. I feel energized, and my body eventually feels lighter. I lost one to two pounds a day. My skin became clearer and tighter, too. My gallstones came out naturally through pooping on the fourth and ninth day. They were many than I expected. It felt great, and I feel better thereafter. I've learned that whatever we put into our mouth really plays a big part on our health. Eating more fresh veggies and fruits helps to lower bad cholesterol, eliminates toxins, and improve digestion too. Ezekiel 47, 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they bear, will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Yeah. The Lord impressed me to read Daniel chapter 1. We didn't preach to this lady. We shared a little here, a little there. And the Lord said, go easy. Wait till the mind opens up more. And, and, and the Holy Spirit told her, you read Daniel chapter 1. So she did. This is what she found out. She says, where they fasted for 10 days with only vegetables and water. And they appeared better and fatter in flesh than other young men. They were 10 times better in all matters of wisdom and understanding. This encouraged me more to pursue and remain focused until the 10th day. I praised the Lord for restoring my health and blessing me with the nicest people around and thanked Him for using His people as a channel of education, awareness, and natural healing. When this lady completed the program, I asked her, you don't have any kids? She says, no, we, don't, we can't have children. I said, ah. I said, 
How long have you, you been with your husband? Oh, we've been married so many years or whatever. I said, look, after your body is cleaned out, you're going to have a baby. Really? I said, yeah, don't worry. When the body is healthy, you can conceive. You'll have kids. So, oh, pray for me. Within one month, she conceived a child. And now they have a little boy. This is an old picture. The kid is like four years old now. Yeah, he's running all over the place. They emigrated to Canada. And here they are. They brought their friend. About a year or two later, she came back, and she brought her friend and her husband. So this is Hazel and J.M., her husband, and then Malou, her friend. And they came, and they went through the cleanse together, and they brought their Bibles with them. And as they were fasting, and the mind began to open up more and more, I started sharing a little bit about health, and then we talked about the gospel, then we got on the subject of grace, and then we talked about the law of God, and they're like, wow, wow, wait, wait, wait. So they got their Bibles, and we had Bible studies every night. The first night until 11 o'clock, they were up till 2 o'clock in the morning, reviewing everything I had shared with them. And they said, oh, Kuya, morning, in the morning, they said, we have question, we, we want to study. I said, wait, 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 let's do all your treatments today, and then tonight we'll have another study. Okay, okay. So we studied every night. Make a long story short, they have accepted the Adventist message, and they're observing Sabbath, and the husband of Malou, who lives in Singapore, this is our uh, chat group. We have a Bible study usually once a week. It's been a couple weeks this time because I've been really busy. But we get online and we have our studies and we've gone through Three Angels Messages, Sanctuary, 2300 Days, Health. We've talked about all that. And they're just, just soaking up the Adventist message. They were Pentecostals. Yeah. But they left and they were leaders in the Pentecostal church. And they left. Come out of her, my people. They left Babylon. Praise the Lord. This is Central Design Conference. We did a program with the president and a bunch of the pastors and administrators. We did three programs there. It's like a five-day program. Uh, we saw blood pressure come down, blood sugar come down. We serve raw soup and raw salads on the day that they break their fast. Uh, day number five. And we also do steam baths during a cleanse. This is a cleanse we did in Los Angeles years ago. So fasting can help us to lose weight and can tone up our bodies just by fasting. Really powerful. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of what exactly is the program. This is a sample. So if you want to take a picture of this, you can. Um, I'll leave it up there for a few moments. So you can do like combinations of juices like carrot apple juice. Your green juices can be romaine lettuce, cucumber, celery, green leaf lettuce, some unripe pineapple in the case of diabetics. We use unripe pineapple. Uh, just a little ripe, not, I mean, just low sugar content. You don't want the one that smells all sweet and everything because you don't want too much sugar, again. And if you're going to do that, you got to dilute it down. But since we want the greens pure, we just add a little bit of pineapple, very non-sweet. Vegetable juice, carrot, apple, cucumber, tomato, celery, cilantro, or parsley, very good for removing heavy metals from the body. All right. Here we go. How much juice do we drink? You know, some people say, oh, you know, I tried fasting, and man, I got a terrible headache, and I felt so terrible. Well, how much, how much juice did you drink? Two? I was like, uh, two, you mean two glasses? Yeah. I said, no wonder why you had a headache. Your blood sugar went pew, you know. So you got to drink plenty of juice. We, we give one glass. We give at least an eight-ounce glass of juice every hour throughout the day. Every hour throughout the day. And we drink water and herb teas in between the juices. This is a flushing out, cleansing, assisting nature process. Different words for the same thing. Detox. Detoxifying. Cleansing the body. After each day of fasting, you take an enema with lukewarm water in order to cleanse and detoxify the colon. Because when you're fasting, all those toxins and dead cells are going into the intestine. And you've got to flush them out. Otherwise, they're being reabsorbed back into the liver, back into the bloodstream, and you're just auto-intoxicating yourself. Not good. You have to clean the colon. We recommend two to three bags of water in one session. 
Of course, you can't take a whole bag all at once. It's a lot. So as much as you can hold in, pull the tip out, jump on the toilet, let it out, wipe, reinsert, and repeat until you go through about two to three bags of lukewarm water until nothing but water is just coming out. Then you're done for the day. Day number four and five. This is something you can do at home. You don't need supervision for this. It's really easy, okay? Day number four and five, you eat fresh, ripe fruits, preferably juicy fruits like watermelon, melon, or papaya, or even mango. In the case of diabetics, we only give salad, raw salad, no fruit. We give some tomatoes, but no fruits. Mango, okay, you can also have a little oatmeal along with some of the fruits, but if you're going to do that, you just a little tiny bit. If you eat too much, you're going to get a whopping stomach ache, trust me. I've broken all the rules because I'm hard-headed, and I've learned the wrong way and the right way, so do it the right way. Save yourself some suffering. Day number four and five again. For lunch, you're going to eat large raw salad like kale, lettuce, cucumber, tomatoes. Uh, you can put some onion, lemon, salt, a little bit of olive oil. No oil for diabetics or heart disease or cancer patients. Okay? Eat veggie sticks, celery, carrots, cucumber. They call it rabbit food, but we're not rabbits. God made that for us. We're the ones that feed the rabbits, right? Okay. Let's listen to another testimony. I'm almost done, then my wife's going to come up here and share with us, okay? Okay, so here we have with us at the Aster. Aster, sorry. And um, she's just going to share with us a little bit about her uh, blood pressure. Um, we know that when we started, the blood pressure was 140 over... This is in the summer in the Philippines. On my sweating. first day, it was 140 over 89. Okay. And this is day number four of fasting. Yesterday, the blood pressure was... 110. 110 over right. 80. No. No? Over 78. Okay, 110 yeah. over 78. And what is your blood pressure this morning? It's 112 over 70, I think. 112 over 70. I think and it's normalizing. <laughs> yeah, it's normalizing because of fasting. See, the body begins to clean out all mm -hmm. of the atherosclerotic plaque that's built up in your arteries, begins to melt that cholesterol, um, and begins to clean out is basically what it's all about. So, how are you feeling this morning? I feel light yeah. and I feel great. Good. No more use because, because every morning before I used to wake up with uh, pain in my left ear. Wow. Above, your, above your left ear? Yes, okay. here. Okay. And I would just rub white flour on, on it <laughs> and drink aspirin. Okay. But now, no more pain. <laughs> no more pain. Now, did you have a stroke or you were you had a stroke? I think I am, I, I'm almost, Near I'm leading to that. Oh, <laughs> I almost she's have leading it. up to, your, well, because you're not family. feeling good, right? Yeah. Yes. Young family. And my jaw yeah. is uh, getting uh, that numb. numb. Numb, Ah, uh, before. But now? No more. Wow. So amazing things are happening in your body yes. as you fast and cleanse your system. So this is really exciting, folks. And your skin. And yeah, oh yeah, all the ladies are glow. Yeah, all the ladies are glowing. The skin is just amazing. So we're gonna continue, and. Um... Okay, so we'll skip now. This young man is my son's best friend, and I'll listen to his testimony. Hello, everyone. We're here in Louisiana Laguna. We're out in the what's called the Bukid here in the Philippines. Uh, that means in the country. This is our property. <coughs> and uh, I have with me Aro Romana. Uh, he's uh, one of the best friends of my son Paul. Can we turn the volume up on the... And I don't know uh, if there's any way to adjust that. It's been about uh, three is that it? weeks okay. ago Thanks. All right. that Aro had a stroke. And uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experience, what happened and everything. Well, uh, 26 first, years old. Uh, I feel Two strokes. In, uh, in my right... Um, Older. Right. Then all of a sudden, just starting to get numb. And so pain, numbness. Uh, my right hand. There we go. This has always been. Uh, I mean, what, what do you call it? His right hand was closed. closed. Yeah. So so after the stroke, his hand, his right hand is always closed, right? Right. And you can't open it. Yeah. Yeah. And then how about the right side of your body? You were feeling what? What did you feel on the right side of your body? Even your leg, uh, on your your side, everything. Mm -hmm. it started to get numb from. Up here, then going to the leg. Okay. Then after like a few hours, I cannot stand. Cannot wow. walk. You can't get up. Yeah, I can't okay. get up. Okay, so you're stuck mm -hmm. in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, I got a phone call from my son Paul in the United States. He's on chat with him on uh, Messenger, and he said, Dad, you need to rush over to Otto's house because he's having another stroke. Take him to the hospital. I said, okay. So I ran there. I mean, I, we literally, I took Jake in with me. We jumped in the car. We went over there about five minutes drive to town. Uh, went into his house. He was upstairs just laying down. And I said, uh, what are you feeling? He said, I have a lot of pain here, the pain, and then going up here. And then, uh, and then I brought my tincture of cayenne pepper with me. It's 180,000 heat units, one drop. It's very it's hot. It's liquid. Extremely very, hot. Very, very, very hot. And so I put uh, two drops in just a little tiny bit of water, set him up, let him drink that. And was it hot? It's, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. That will open up the blood vessels yeah. and uh, thin the blood and get the circulation going and stop that stroke in its in its track. Then after about five minutes, uh, he said he can handle more. I said, okay, let's do it. So I give him another little shot, but this time I put four drops. I couldn't take four fire. drops. Fire. My mouth would be on fire. Real fire. <laughs> yeah. So after that, um, how did you feel after that? What happened? Well, it's starting to hit all over my body with the, um, and then you can feel the fire uh, <laughs> yeah, and then like my body starting to warm and then all all the part of uh, my body that that's numb started to feel like you know tingling tingling okay to have feels okay so yeah. you're having feeling again yeah. okay all right that's all and then um, so what happened was you know we i checked his blood pressure his blood pressure was 110, 110 over 90, wasn't it? Something like that? Yeah, yeah it, was, it wasn't it high. Like but he was given Losartan, which is a, mm -hmm. a high blood pressure medication that he was supposed to take every day. It was given by the doctor after the first stroke, right? Yeah. 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 So he was on high blood pressure medication because uh, he did have high blood pressure. But when I checked his blood pressure, it wasn't high. Um, and he wasn't able to walk uh, very well at all. Um, so I said, okay, look, I'm going to put you on a fruit fast. I want you to eat nothing but fruits. This is what LMI no said. Meat. Fruit fast. No cheese, for no a few days. chicken, no eggs, no milk, no, no pork, nothing. No animal foods. Just strictly fruits, not even cooked foods. No rice, nothing. Just only fruits. And then I gave him some Miracle Leaf. It's a leaf that we use. It's a very bitter leaf. It's very similar to Serpentina here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what you would compare that to in the United States, but the, it's a very bitter herb. And it's very good for detoxifying and cleansing the body. So it, I think it's a blood purifier is what it is. Um, but it's good for cancer patients. We use it for diabetics. We use it for people with pain. Uh, it's just a miracle leaf. I mean, <laughs> that's what we call it, miracle leaf. It comes from Japan. Anyway, so I give him some of that. You drank some of that. Yeah, and, a whole uh, picture of it. Yeah, a whole picture of it. <laughs> and uh, how did you feel like two days after you started just eating nothing but fruits and then drinking the tea? Well, what happened? First, uh, I started to feel um, weak, but but uh, in a week later, starting to feel like um, you call that. You know, uh, I'm regaining uh, strength. Okay. Like I've not been before because. How about your hand that was like this? Yeah, like that, that you can't open. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. starting to know. So it was like mm -hmm. I think it was like five days later mm -hmm. after the second stroke that he came here to do a 10-day cleanse program. When I went to your house, he was he, he was able to walk downstairs. He said, look at my hand, look. His <laughs> hand was, I said, wow, that's amazing, praise the Lord. Yeah. So then we brought him here, started flushing the intestine, flushing the kidneys, uh, giving coffee enema to clean out the liver, steam bath, uh, juice fasting. Uh, he did a, a full body massage. So here we are 10 days later, after a three-day juice fast and one day of raw food, because he came a day late, uh, which is fine. And then we did a four-day juice fast, and then one day today, uh, today is the, the last day, actually the ninth day, it's the ninth day, yeah, because uh, he came a day late. Um, so today is raw food, so he fasted for four days and then ate his first food this morning. So after this nine days of being here, how do you feel? Tell me what you're feeling about it. Oh, I like a young man again. Although you're only 26, you feel like what? Okay, so 
This young man said he felt like he was 16 years old. He called my son up and he was crying. He said, I have never felt so good in my whole life. His whole diet was flesh food and dairy products. He didn't eat fruits or vegetables. So I put him on nothing but fruits and vegetables, got rid of all those animal foods, put him on fasting, detox, all of that, and he totally recovered. The guy's running around, skateboarding, riding a bicycle. He's doing all these amazing things. In closing, uh, we did a cleanse program at Central Zone Conference with like three different groups of pastors. We did about 60 pastors and two presidents. Uh, this guy was scheduled for gallbladder surgery, and we flushed his gallstones out in five days. Recently, there they are. These are the jewels. You're looking at $2,000 worth of stones. A little more expensive than diamonds. All right. So uh, we did a cleanse program two weeks ago in Sutter Creek, California, for a friend of mine's daughter. He's an old friend of mine uh, from the Philippines. We did a lot of work together many years ago. And he said, I need you to help my daughter. She's diabetic and she's overweight. And she's going to have IVF treatment and so on. Anyways, so we went up there. They bought this huge house. It's like five or six bedrooms. And they rented for Airbnb. Beautiful swimming pool. And we stayed there for like, we were there for like five days. And we did a cleanse program. Now, this is the place, beautiful place in the country. We put her on juice fasting. This, this woman was taking 2,000 milligrams of metformin a day. That's five horse pills that are 500 milligrams each. Her blood sugar uh, earlier in this year was 200, 180, 175 with 2,000 milligrams of metformin. When, when we got to her on 2,000 milligrams of metformin, her beginning blood sugar was 138 with 2,000 milligrams of metformin. Then the blood sugar went down, 116. Monday morning, no medication, 116. Then we let her take, when it went up to 134, she took one pill. 129, no medication. Then over here, no medication. Here, one pill. 153, I said, take one pill. She took one pill, 111. Ending blood sugar, no medication. Day number four, day number five. This is the ending blood sugar at 6.23 p.m. after having drank juices, including pure carrot apple juice. A few times. Not all the time, but a few times. And this is what she texts me. My A1C level dropped a point. I started at 8.7 in June, then 7.9 in July, now 6.9. That's a good sign. If this continues and my A1C goes down to 5.5, that means no diabetes. I'll work on it. That's five days. It dropped one point in five days. I'm sure the blood sugar is just going to go way down. Look at this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me back up. Notice this. This is on the second day of eating cooked food. This is the morning blood sugar with no medications. Third or fourth, fourth day with no medication, 69. I told her, you must exercise every day, six days a week, rest on Sabbath. You must exercise, 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 and you have to change your diet. This is the food we served her on the last day of the program, raw food. My wife's going to demonstrate what you see right here on the screen, okay? This is what she ate out at a restaurant. You know, the spring rolls, a little tofu, some veggies, you know, and then some tofu soup and a little bit of rice. And this person is committed to a healthy lifestyle program, and I guarantee you that her diabetes is already gone. It's just a process. I said, it might jump up a little, blood sugar might go up a little bit, but don't worry about it. Just exercise, get out there, play pickleball, go jogging, you know, run on the treadmill. She sent me a text this morning. Hey, she says, uh, I'm in the gym real early. I hope nobody spooks me. And she's going to run on the treadmill and do all this exercise. And it's just a matter of exercise and diet and drinking lots of water. That concludes my lecture. My wife is going to come up. She's going to share with us as we prepare to bring everything else up front. What do you need, my love? Oh, yeah, okay, so up to this point, do we have any questions at this point? Question and answer time for a few minutes while she finishes. Yes, please. 
Yes, when you're fasting and detoxifying the body, you'll see tapeworms come out and other types of parasites will come out. I've seen live worms come out of people and I've seen dead, dead worms come out of people. Uh, I've seen entire to toilet bowl full, toilet bowls full of parasites come out of me and my wife when we first started doing this. Yes. Okay, so, yeah, so the question was, do you see parasites come out of people when they're fasting? The answer is yes. Lots of parasites. Most everybody who has ever eaten animal foods has parasites, one kind or another. They just kind of go through you, you know. Even when you touch the knob on the door or, you know, you pet an animal, you pick up eggs of worms and, you know, you eat and they go through you. If you're moving your bowel regular, you shouldn't have any problems. But if you're not moving your bowel regular, then you, you can start experiencing fatigue, headaches, grinding your teeth at night while sleeping. Yeah, that's a sign of parasitic. Itchy nose, that's a sign of parasitic infection, okay? And my wife and I had lots of parasites. You know, we live in the Philippines. There's a lot of parasites over there and a lot of animals running around and they're not in healthy condition and the food and the water sometimes is not the best. So, you know, uh, we pick up a lot of parasites there. But we, we keep our intestines clean. So we don't have problems with that, like years and years ago. Yes. Yes, from the vegetables in the water. That's correct. Y so, you know, wash your vegetables well. Drink purified water. Um, and you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Make sure your bowel is moving regular. Exercise, all that. Yes, question. Yeah, the, yeah, it's a steam bath. Yes, portable steam bath. And how often would you recommend okay, so if you're doing a fast, we do a steam bath every day for about 20 to 30 minutes. Make sure you put an ice bag on the head to keep the brain cool. If you're not doing a fast, you can use it a couple times a week. Okay. Yeah, and you can get those on Amazon. That's where we buy them. They're cheap. They're only a hundred and something dollars, whatever. Yeah. You can buy them uh, elsewhere as well. I'm not advertising for Amazon, but you get the point. So yeah, you can buy those, and they're very effective, and it helps to increase elimination. Remember, the whole idea of, of cleansing is to assist nature to expel impurities from the system. That's what the prophet says, right? So if we do that, we're going to flush all that stuff out, and the body's going to heal. The immune system is going to be rejuvenated, and we're going to be well, right? Good question. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I have some written information. I have some programs for reversing diabetes and other things like that. I have written programs for that. Um, it's all educational in nature. Um, and I do, we do have a YouTube channel. And we're going to put that slide up at the end of this presentation. And I recommend you watch our, our videos on YouTube. We have videos on reversing heart disease, videos on reversing diabetes. We have whole lectures on those, su those subjects alone, so you can watch some of our videos there. And we put it up for educational purposes, so yeah, you can access more information that way. And if you have any questions, you can email us. We'd be happy to respond, yeah. We're always available, whether we're here or in Asia. Uh, you can contact us. I see they're bringing a lot of goodies up here. My wife is going to do a short lecture. Daryl, are you ready? Do we have another question? Anybody have a question? Any other questions at this point? Okay, wow. All the good stuff is coming up here now. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. Here, let's put this one over here. Yeah, we'll put this over here. Right, right. So this is going to stay here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, this we'll do this. You're going to do smoothie first or what? Oh, you're going to do the other first. Okay. All right, so Daryl's going to take over. And you got a mic, so you're ready to go. There you go. Out of the way. Oh, yeah, just leave it there for now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so let's just read this slide real quick. Um, this is from Ann Wigmore. I don't know if you know her. She's the one that pioneered the wheatgrass juice. So the wheatgrass juice, or the wheatgrass shot that you see in Jamba Juice, that's from her. Um, I guess um, she had cancer and she overcame cancer. Um, she says, the food you eat can be either the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. So every time we put something in here, we have to think, is this poison or is this medicine? And with that in mind, 
then we will not put a lot of things that we put in here, right? <laughs> we, will, uh, we will start to think twice about what we put in there. Also, uh, Hippocrates, who is the father of medicine, says, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So that's why we're going to do this demo right now because we have to start thinking this way. Let food be our medicine and medicine be thy food. So everything we put in here, we should think of it as something that will nourish our bodies, will heal our bodies, and not make us sick. And so the first thing we're going to do, actually before that, I'm going to do a short demo on a few things that will help heal the heart because we were talking about healing the heart, right? So um, we have here, um, we're going to do a... Uh, a couple of drink that is good for uh, strengthening the heart, for in increasing blood circulation, and um, for helping melting the, ha melting the cholesterol also. So this is what we have here. The first one is um, we're going to make a lemon, lemon and cayenne drink. <coughs> and of all the herbs, Cayenne is, should be something that we should always have in our pockets even. Have, it, have one in your, in your um, glove box of the car, have one in your pocket, have one in your purse. Because Dr. Scholz, I don't know if you know Dr. Dr. Scholz, he's a naturopath, uh, master herb herbalist, he calls himself. He's, he's, he's supposedly the, the number one student of um, Dr. Christopher. He says, with cayenne on hand, nobody will get a heart attack. And like James shared, I don't know, he shared, you shared, right? Stop. With R out there, it's, it stopped the stroke right there. He gave him a dose of this. So uh, what we're going to do is we have hot water right here, a glass of hot water, and we put cayenne, um, cayenne a pinch of cayenne, and then also lemon juice. See, it, it's important that the water needs to be hot. Why? Because um, when you have uh, uh, oil that's already frozen or hardened, what do you do? You heat it up, right? And then when you, uh, when you want to harden it up again, what do you do? Put it back in the fridge, right? So to melt that oil or fat that's in the blood, you put hot water I mean, run hot water through your system, and that will start to melt those cholesterol and fat. So that's why it's important that the water needs to be hot. And then the lemon juice, we know lemon juice is very, very powerful. In fact, uh, through our own experience, we've seen how powerful this lemon is. We actually use calamansi, which was in the Philippines because we were there. It's, uh, calamansi is more readily av available. And we, um, me and my friend, our massage therapist actually, who sometimes um, travels with us and gives lecture also uh, along with us, we, um, we were drinking pure lemon, ca pure calamansi juice. And we uh, squeezed the lemon juice and put it in those, um, those cups, those, uh, what you call this? Pa no, not the paper cups, the other kind. The styrofoam cups. Styrofoam cups. And then we drank it. But you know what? After we drank the, the calamansi, we noticed that it, eated, it has eaten the styrofoam. She says that, oh, that's really true that calamansi or lemon, citrus, is very, very powerful in melting those cholesterol and fats. So that's why we do this. And we recommend that you do this early in the morning. Um, first thing in the morning, nothing in the stomach. You know why? Then the stomach will absorb that right away. Um, by the way, uh, most of our immune system function starts right here in the gut. That's why it's very important that we keep that gut clean. And James talked about that already. So we d I didn't have um, I didn't have uh, I didn't find the strainer there. So we just squeeze the lemon in the hot water, and then uh, do a pinch of cayenne and drink it. In fact, I was drinking that all day. We didn't actually have breakfast this morning, and what I had was just a big tall glass of lemon juice with cayenne. Um, when you're starting to feel sleepy and drowsy, drink cayenne with, um, with um, drink lemon with cayenne, and that will sure wake you up. 
and th that's it. And then another drink that I want to s want to show you is um, lemon juice with garlic. So for somebody that's having a um, high blood pressure, re um, or um, even a stroke also, that would be good. But uh, actually, with the with the stroke, it's um, advisable to use just the cayenne because it's e readily uh, um, absorbed right away. And if you have the tincture, that's even better, which is what James used when he had that, you know, the friend of my, our son. He used the cayenne tincture because that was, you know, that was easier, plus it's 10 times more powerful because it's already concentrated. So used um, hot water again. It's important that it's hot. And then you just put the chopped garlic on there. This is two cloves of garlic. And um, it's actually better if the water is boiling for this one because it will um, it will uh, take out the uh, med medicinal properties of the garlic faster because it's hot. And then you let that sip there for a few minutes. And then once it's cooled down enough to drink, then you put the lemon and then you drink. So we have had so many testimonies of people that have as even asthma attacks or uh, you know starting to have this high blood pressure and then we let them drink this and slowly but surely the blood pressure will go down so that's that for that drink so um yes we we buy ours but there are um, instructions actually online on how to do it what they do is they steep it in alcohol, actually. Vodka. Yeah, vodka. In yeah, in the Philippines, they use galambanog, which is actually better because it's, you know, it's coconut, coconut based. So, and then you steep that there for about a month, I think. And then some, the, like the herb company that we use, they even steep it twice. So that's really, really strong and potent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And because it's extracted in alcohol, you only use like one or two drops. Yeah. It's not like you're drinking alcohol. It's just a way to as many as a whole bunch. Yeah, a whole big, bunch. Big handful. Just put it in there. It doesn't matter. The hotter, the better. But you're only using one or two drops. It's really, really hot. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's very, very. It's, yes. ma it's just medicine. Yeah. Yes, I chopped it real fine so that that yeah, so that way it releases the allicin and all. That. Yes, that would be better. That would be better because that's already you know that already takes out and yeah, releases the a tea out of the garlic. Yes. You're basically making garlic tea. Yes. Question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the morning drink. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, yeah. Actu yes. but if you're used to it, then it's not anymore. And also, uh, another thing, if you are acidic and you have a lot of acid in your stomach, do not, do not drink it because it will make you vomit and it will make you miserable and it will really uh, give you a yeah, very uncomfortable. What I suggest if you're very, very acidic is just drink straight warm water mm -hmm. for a while until... The acidic, st uh, the acids in your stomach starts to melt down and melt away, and then you can start drinking a little bit of the lemon slowly but surely. Yes. 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 But with the juicing and the fasting and also the warm water, it will s uh, slowly um, melt away all those acids, and then you can. Yes. 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 Yes.
think it's, it's, do you think it's common sense? It's common sense and discipline. Yes. That's the number one uh, enemy of a human being. Without your discipline, without discipline and common sense, regardless on how many times you go and learn all this process, it's going to be a knot. You know, uh, yeah. one, one more thing. When it comes to eating, two meals a day is better than three. If you're a carpenter, if you're a mechanic, and you're building houses, you need three meals a day. But if you're not, two meals a day is sufficient. But eat plenty. And if you get hungry, you're going to do a green smoothie in between your meals. And that, we're going to demonstrate that. So, you know, if I'm working in the Bukid, which is the country, in Tagalog, Bukid, yeah, no, no, I it's in the country. If I'm working on the farm, you know, I'm planting bananas, doing a lot of digging, or I'm assisting the carpenters building a house or something, then I eat three meals. But as a rule, since I've been an Adventist, it's two meals a day yeah. for the most part. And I have plenty of energy. Yeah. The, reason, the reason why I eat once a day because I'm not doing anything. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I'm yeah, not working I mean anymore. I just yeah. stay home and do nothing. Yeah. And sometimes I said, mm, don't even eat. You don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't exercise, don't eat. Exactly. And also, one thing is that learn to listen to your body. Because God has given us, in, uh, built in our system, an intelligence that God has put in there so that we will listen to what the body is saying. Like you said, I would be drinking this lemon drink every day, but then after a week or two, then my body says, I don't want that anymore. And I don't. I don't drink it anymore. I stop because the body is saying, you've had enough acid, that's enough. You've melted whatever needs to be melted. It's time to stop. So that's what I do. I stop. So there are times we will be craving something so sweet. But of course... Our, perver our perverted appetite says, oh, I need chocolate. <laughs> no, the body's saying you need fruits. Yeah. Oh, I need eggs and I need this uh, burger. No, your body needs protein. Yeah. Eat some nuts. Eat some uh, protein-rich food. So we need to listen to our body according to God's instruction that's built in, the, in our system. Okay, so that's it. That's that for the drink. Now we're going to talk about raw foods because we're going to do some demo, um, some uh, raw dressing demo, demo and also um, mock tuna pate. Um, why raw food? Okay, we were talking about that with our sister there um, at, during lunchtime. She said, benefits of following a raw food diet include improved skin appearance, excess weight loss, improved digestion, the reduction of many diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, as well as many other health debilitating ailments. Raw foods typically do not have as many trans and saturated fats as compared to most cooked foods, especially the fast food, especially fast food, junk food, and any other processed foods. So, um, um, like what Sister is saying, she had to do it because she had to do it with, with her mother who was trying to overcome some health problems, and she had to do it for 40 days. And guess what? After 40 days, the health problem disappeared, right? In fact, if you would search online, um, there's a lot of testimonies of people that have overcome, overcame their health problems by eating raw food. In fact, there are raw challenges even. There's raw for 30 days where people sign up and they go raw for 30 days so that way they can overcome diabetes, heart disease, or whatever. And the success rate is very, very good. And we have seen this ourselves. Um, what else? Raw foods are also extremely high in nutrients such as potassium, magnesium, fiber, and plant phy phytochemical. So most of the people that we, um, we tend to when we do medical missions, they're low on this um, mag potassium, magnesium. So um, that's why they have all kinds of health problems. A report from the Journal of Nutrition stated that increased use of raw foods in our diet lowers both cholesterol and triglyceride levels in the body. So uh, like with ja what James shared, with fasting, that even makes it faster to melt all those. But you can do this also for uh, with doing raw foods. Like you said, go on a challenge, do nothing but raw for 30 days, and see how the those numbers go down. 
cholesterol, triglyceride, blood sugar, and so it's very, very effective. Um, why raw foods? So when you eat cooked food meal, 80% of your body's total available energy is expen expended in the, pro in the processing of that meal. When you eat a raw food meal, the energy expended in processing is reduced to only 20%. No wonder why after eating a heavy cooked meal, you're like, you have to go to sleep. <laughs> in fact, actually, to be honest with you, James and I were sharing with the sister here, we actually did a raw food diet. And it started out as an experiment because, you know, we wanted, we had some health, health problems. I had some health problems, basically, and we wanted to overcome those health problems. So um, it, it's supposed to be only a year, right? And I, we did it with my mom and dad, so that, that makes it easier when you're doing it with, with a group because, you know, it's really challenging. But then after a year, we felt so good. I was telling the sister we only needed to sleep like five to six hours every night. We couldn't sleep, and it's, uh, I, I was telling her, it was so funny that at lunch, after lunch, um, church members are dozing off, and they're taking a nap, and me and James are like laughing and laughing and talking to each other because we couldn't sleep, even if we wanted to. <laughs> we could not sleep. So we had this so much energy, and we felt so good, and all the health problems disappeared even more, like other stuff that we didn't, you know, we were not addressing, but they all went away. You don't get any, not even boogers. <laughs> That's true. I was so amazed. You don't get any colds. You don't get any <laughs> boogers. I said, wow, this is so amazing. <laughs> Tell them how many years we eat raw. And so we ended up eating, it, eating raw food for five years. And I was telling the sister, the first meal when we introduced a little bit of cooked food, because after eating raw for five years and you eat a, whole, a, a meal of raw foods, you have to introduce raw, uh, cooked foods slowly. So the first meal with a little bit of cooked food, we had to go to sleep for hours. <laughs> so that's true what he's saying here, because you expend a lot of energy in digesting the cooked meal. So, <laughs> so if you can't sleep, yeah. I guess. <laughs> So it says most people go through their entire lives totally unaware of their true potential because their bodies are perpetually under the heavy burden of processing the natural foods they are eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one also was for, again from Dr. Ann Wigmore. 85% of the nutritional value of food is destroyed by cooking it. Mm. Which means that people eat 8 to 10 times as much food as they need in order to get their proper nourishment. No wonder why even after eating a whole meal, you feel like, I didn't get enough. I'm like looking in the refrigerator for something else because the body's telling you you didn't get enough mm -hmm. nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just wanted to say one of the things that impacted me about raw food is this simple science experiment that usually our kids grow up with when they're in elementary school or something. And that was one of my kids did this experiment. You get an apple, and it, you have this electronic gadget yes. that you plug into yeah. the apple. Yeah, it yeah. goes for like two, three days. Yeah. Wow. Was yeah. Like it, it, was, it was like a little clock or something. Oh, okay. um, but there was energy in that <laughs> apple. You know, you plug, you plug something into a piece of meat, you're not going to get anything. Yes. <laughs> but the apple had energy. Just imagine you just eat that energy. So that's why we tell people if, if you're trying to overcome some kind of illness or sickness, raw food, the juicing, and the green smoothie that we're going to demonstrate later on, they are important because you can't get life out of dead that out of death you can't get life out of something that's already dead so to get life you have to to eat life you have to juice life you have to drink life so let me show you some pictures of people that have transformed their um, lives from eating raw foods so these people before raw after raw this is um, George George Malkmus is a Baptist Past, uh, pastor, Baptist minister, who a overcame cancer from eating raw foods and juicing. And now he runs a 
Lifestyle Center, Hallelujah Acres Lifestyle Center, where he teaches people um, the benefits of eating raw foods, juicing, and people are coming from all over the world to go there to get well of their sicknesses and diseases. And you know what else too? He trains what he calls health ministers. And they go out and share. You, you've been there? You went through that? See, imagine that. But, but the sad thing is, brothers and sisters, who's supposed to be doing this work? We are supposed to be doing this. We're not supposed to be going to the Baptist minister to learn this because we've been giving this message hundred, over 100 years ago. So, but then the encouragement, brothers and, sister, brothers and sisters, we can redeem the time. God wants us now to experience better health, to be whole to be to be well and then we need to share this healing to others because the world needs it very very badly okay this person vegan diet and after right this one and then this lady here standard american diet in 20 2004 and then 2010, and here she is now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> See, that, that's what we felt when we went raw. We felt younger. We felt more energy. Because we had people that hadn't seen us in years and said, you guys look younger. What have you been doing? Yeah. They're just eating. <laughs> We're just eating raw food. They said, wow, that's amazing. So Karen at 1999, at age 27, there and here she was in 2006, age 33. Looks a lot younger at 33 than when she was at 27. And I think she's, this is the same lady, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this lady, 2010 and 2011. Seven months, yeah. Yep. And this lady, look at that, 256 pounds. And here she was <coughs> at 138. And Gingy Talifero before Raw, 20, at 24 and 39 years after Raw. Looks a lot younger. This guy, he has some, um, we keep on forgetting to search out his name. He has, um, he has his own um, website and he shares people about, he shares to people about health also. Before and after, and this lady. And this one, look at the transformation. Yeah. Skin gets clearer, younger, looks younger. Raw food. Raw food. Seven months, yeah. Yep, so raw food heals the body, it rejuvenates, and it also transforms you from inside out. Oops. I don't know why it's this, this is here. <laughs> okay, so, we, yeah, okay, I, I, you don't have the recipe here for the um, oh. dressing. Okay, yeah, it took me a yeah. to so we can, um, so at this point we wanna demonstrate um, simple salad dressing because you know we're encouraging people to eat a lot of raw food. So one thing that's important is to make your own salad dressing because a lot of the salad dressings that we find in the um, grocery store, even in the health food store, of course they're not raw and they're already processed and I don't know how they can keep it, you know, uh, how, how does it doesn't spoil for days and days and even months, so they must be putting something in there. So it's better to make your own. And it's simple and it's easy to make our own salad dressing. Um, what we have here, okay, that's it, that's the recipe right there. And I called it a basic salad dressing because out of that salad dressing, then you can make your own other types of salad dressing, um, and which we will um, we will show you in a little bit. So what we have here is one and a half cup of cashews, which have been soaking since um, this morning, I guess. Um, Mom Renee has um, worked hard to put all this together. Thank you so much, and soak them also. And then water does. So uh, uh, one third cup cider vinegar. You're gonna put this with no, water? No, not with the water. No? Okay. So I don't know. The water is clean. <laughs> the water is using water. Okay, that's okay, good. Okay, so just dump the whole thing in there, right? I don't know if that's one third cup of water. It might be too no, much. No, Looks like it's too much. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. let, me, let me get a spoon. Um, is there a spoon? I here? put a spoon right oh, there. We got one or here. you can just use your gloves to get it out. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, I think so, um, why do we soak the cashews? It's better to soak your nuts to soften them, and it makes a creamier dressing. And it also makes um, the nuts easier to digest for our bodies because um, nuts yeah. have the enzyme inhibitors in them that God has put in there to keep it from sprouting, you know, unless water is added to it. So God has put that in there. That's the life force of the nuts. So with that, when water is added to it, then it starts to sprout, and that makes it easier for our digestion. So, um, and then um, apple cider vinegar. So there's controversies on this also. Some people say don't use apple cider vinegar. Others say it's okay because it's healthy. So I don't want to take side. I don't want to make controversy if you don't. If you don't think you should use apple cider vinegar, then just use lemon or calamansi. Is this it? It's okay also. Yeah. So this is the apple cider yeah, vinegar? Yeah, but with the okay. apple cider, cider vinegar, it makes the dressing last longer because, you know, it's some kind of a preservative. Okay, what else? All of that. Okay. All of that goes in. Olive oil. Yep, olive oil. And if you have diabetes or heart disease, just leave out the olive oil. It's okay. Honey, right? It just adds a you know a creaminess to it, so we add a little bit of uh, olive oil, but it's not necessary. You don't need to. So for those who come to us that have heart disease or diabetes, we don't use oils. Or what I do in the Philippines is I use actually the fresh coconut milk, which is oil also, yeah. but it's not processed and it's fresh. It is plant-based. And then we've got a clove of garlic. A clove of garlic and, and a little pin, a little. Um, like a quarter of an quarter onion. Quarter of onion, onion, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can use the whole we'll thing. use the whole thing, okay. Yeah, so I like onions. to use the fresh onion and garlic better than the Powder, powdered yes. ones because it just gives a better flavor. Okay. So I'll show you the consistency of this. I'll just kind of pass it around so you can see how, how that looks. Yeah, we'll just take a look. It's nice and creamy. Look at that. It's, it looks like mayonnaise almost, doesn't it? So look at that. See? So, I, I, oops, so that's a basic salad dressing, and there are variations of oops. this. This is the base dressing. How do I go back? And we're going to demonstrate. You can also talk about the other kinds of dressing, my love. Yeah, I was going to. Well, know there know was what a happened. second page. All you got to do is go back. I don't know what happened. I that's right. Okay. No, we're, we're no, no, gonna no go that's later. That. <laughs> don't worry. You'll get to see that. Hang on. Yeah, we're, we're not going to leave you hanging. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Let, let, let me... Um, what happened? No, it's okay. Yeah. I don't know what you did here. Yeah, I don't okay, know what Okay, I, I think did. you went way, way back too far. Yeah, so I, okay. I called it a basic salad dressing because out of this dressing, you can make other kinds of dressing. Like if you want an Italian dressing, then <laughs> just add... Uh, two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, then you have Italian dressing. If you want a uh, thousand island dressing, then just add one red bell pepper to it. And if you want a French dressing, add a really, really ripe tomato or tomato paste. Then you have a French dressing. If you want a ba uh, basil dressing, then add some basil, some fresh basil, and you have a basil dressing. And if you want it to make to, to be like a dip, then make it really, really thick, hardly any water, and you have a dip. And you want it to be cheesy, then hardly any water, and with the red bell pepper, and nutritional yeast, some yeah. people add nutritional yeast, and you have a cheesy, cheesy dip or cheesy sauce. Or if you want to really harden it, you can even add some agar-agar powder, and it will harden like cheese. And you can use it as, um, as for your sandwiches or, um, or whatever you use cheese for. Okay? So any question um, on that? Do we have another extension cord? Or I need to plug the laptop in, and that's so it's only one plug. Um, 
when you make your own salad dressing, then it, cur it encourages you to eat more salads, right? So, um, but people are saying, well, I don't have the time. It's better to just buy the, <laughs> the dressing in the store. It's at the health food store anyways, right? Cucumber dressing, it will be good. Yes, cucumber dressing. Um, what I say, and I say it over and over again, those who do not make time for their wellness will soon find time for their illness. So take the time. No excuses. <laughs> if you have a, w if there's a will, there's a way, right? Yes. Um, we were gonna do the um, the batea. Yeah. So actually, this one came out to very very thick, so we can actually uh, thin it down some also. So next one we're gonna do is the um, another raw recipe, raw mac tuna pate. We call it raw mac tuna pate. Um, I don't know where is the recipe. <laughs> yes, question. Yes, you can. Yes, you may. Macadamia is very good in that also. In the Philippines, I was actually challenged because almonds, you can hardly find almonds except in the grocery store in Manila only. And then cashews are very expensive. You have to, it comes from uh, Palawan. And mahal, it's, mm, it's expensive. And I want to be able to, to teach the people in the barangay, in the small communities in the Philippines, and even those far out places. I want to be able to teach them to, to live healthy even in their um, little barangay. So I was challenged about that until the Lord impressed me with, why not use coconut? And I'm like, yeah, Lord, coconut is a nut. That's why it's called coconut. So why can't I use that? And so in the Philippines, in fact, there's a song that the, all the Filipinos know about. The coconut nut is a giant nut. And it dawned on me. I said, yeah, Lord, that's true. Coconut is a nut. So wherever I need, whenever I need nuts for recipes, especially cashews, I use coconut now. And the good news is anywhere in the Philippines, even islands, even way out in the boonies, they have coconut and even in the market actually. So what I use in the Philippines is the, not the really young coconut, but the one in between, in between the young coconut and the mature coconut. So in the Philippines, we call it gumaan, alangan, yeah, the one that they use a little bit harder than the one that they use for bukayo. Yun. So it's a little bit hard. Um, yes, I scrape it and I put it in a blender also. Yes, that takes the place of cashews, and instead of water, I would use the fresh coconut milk. No, or I don't even use the water, the fresh coconut milk. So that makes a really, really creamy dressing. Yes, it, you can use the canned coconut, but we're fortunate in the Philippines, it's readily available, so we use fresh. And the taste is much better when it's fresh. Yeah, much better. No comparison. <laughs> Um, where's my recipe? Uh, recipe? The raw mac tuna. Okay. There you go. There we go. All right. Okay. We actually forgot to put here the the um, carrots. That might be too much to do in the blender, and we forgot to bring our pusher. pusher. Really? Yeah, I don't think we brought it. Okay. But we can do half and half. So what we have here, just it's right there. You can just take a picture of it or... Um, sunflower seeds. Yeah, so for those who are allergic to nuts, then you can just use the sunflower seeds. And if you're not allergic to coconut, maybe you can use some coconut. 
Brazil nut is good also. Okay, so we have all that. Yeah, good. The, the recipe is missing the carrot. We forgot the carrot in there. So I guess that water is green, so you can use some of it because it requires some water. We probably have to do twice because last time I had to do two. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and put the other stuff in there? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, my nose is itching. <laughs> half and okay. half, maybe. Yeah, all right, let's do half and half. So we got carrot, celery, and we some onion. We got half an onion here. Uh, it's about a quarter, and then we have some garlic. I'm going to do about half, maybe one garlic clove. Yeah, one. And then we have, what is this, salt? Sea salt. So we've got some sea salt here. Lemon. Okay, a little bit of that. We don't want to go too much. And then lemon. We'll probably do half of that because we're going to do half and half first. And we'll blend it up and see how we go here. Any question? I know. We yeah. forgot the pusher. <laughs> yeah, we have a pusher. Yeah, no, we haven't. The O ring? Is that what she said? The nori sheets. Oh, nori it's sheets. It's back oh. there. I okay. forgot it. Yeah, sure. we packed this, the pusher. You I told me you it. handed it to me, remember? Yeah. It's not in the bag? I don't think so. Okay. You didn't use the bag. Yeah, use this one. Yeah. Let me just hang on. Once it gets going, it'll go. Pretty thick. It's looking yeah. good though. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Okay. That's fine. Wow, it smells good too. Wow. I nice. Smell it's going to be good. The good news is everybody gets to taste this. It's, it's really good. You'll enjoy this stuff. Okay. It looks pretty good already, honey. The consistency looks great. Oh so, do we have a plate that we can demonstrate the? No, we can just do that later. We'll do it later? Okay. okay. All right. So this is the nori sheets. So what you can do is you can just tear up some, you know, some pieces of this and put it in there so that will give it the tuna-like, you know, taste. Or um, you can put some purple doll seaweed, sprinkle some of that there so that will mimic the tuna thing. That's why we add the carrots, basically for color, so it has the salmon and tuna color. Otherwise, it will be white, which is okay also. It won't, it won't change the taste. It will be okay that way also. So again, like, it's, like it says here, you can use it Excuse as me. a um, raw sandwich, which you know, you've seen in the um, pictures a while ago. We can use two cabbage leaves as the buns or two um, lettuce, what do you call that? Iceberg lettuce leaves. You can use two of those as the buns and then put this as the meat filling and then put your favorite salad, I mean sandwich fillings like sprouts, avocados, Tomato, tomatoes, onion. onion, whatever you want on your sandwich, then eat that as a raw sandwich. You can also use it as a raw burrito, a raw wrap. 
Actually, I have, I brought one color there just to demonstrate. I forgot it there. And um, you want to bring it up the, best, um, the best um, wrap to use for raw is the colored greens because it's a nice, uh, big and round. You see how that looks? Wrap that, that nice? you can use to roll yeah. this up. And you can, looks like uh, tuna, doesn't it? Look you can that. add whatever you nice? want also on a wrap, whatever All you want. And, nuts and, and then seeds. Isn't that cool? Use yeah. it as a wrap. Nice. And it's really good. You'll get to taste it. Yes, could you, uh, we just need a plate so we can yeah. wrap that up up there. Yeah, that would be nice. And then you can bring that up there while I rinse this. Um, yeah. So you can make that as a raw sushi, which we, we can use with this. this for the next put thing. some of that, put some yeah, just one avocados, paper plate or fine. cucumbers, <laughs> sliced cucumbers, and then it's a raw sushi. And a raw and raw wrap, like I said, Perfect. with the, All right, we're with on the no, there, with the um, Good. colored greens. Okay, and another way is in poke bowls, or what they, they're starting to have lots of that now, those bowls, you know, where they have all these salads and then some grains and then some, um, some yeah. yeah, some beans. Maybe you can take you can, this. Instead of beans, we'll you that. can put this as the protein, and that will be good. That's what I had last time we made this. Show okay. them how this looks. Yeah. So, whoops. Oops. Sorry, honey. Um, do you yes, this is a colored green. It's an organic colored green. I mean well, yeah, well, we don't have the fillings, other stuff. So this is the colored green. Okay. So basically, just put some of that there, and then you put some other uh, fillings that you like. Avocado is very, very good. Sprouts is very good if you have alfalfa sprouts or other sprouts. And then whatever stuff you want. Or if I want it to be like a raw burrito, then I would put that. And then whatever else you put in a burrito, like the shredded lettuce, you put uh, uh, guacamole, you put salsa, uh, chilies, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. So right. those are, there's a lot of possibilities. You can do whatever you like. Okay, next. Okay, any, any question on that? No. All right, you want to go to greens? Or you can just go easy stuff. It's pretty heavy, so you yeah. just go easy on it. Yeah, it's, it's yes. pretty heavy stuff, yeah. But and it's really good. And that should be, you know, an on top of uh, your what you've already eaten, like a big salad. Yeah, so don't make that. Uh, That's not the main course. The main That's meal. just a side thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, we, we roll it up, and then she slices the nori sheets. Yeah. She slices it so a little, little piece is about that big, and then she puts them in a design around the plate, and then, you know, maybe some sauce in the middle, or she might put some other veggies in between. You know, you want the... You want the presentation to look really attractive, and people say, wow, th what is that, you know? So it just really, you know, appeals to the appetite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, so actually, we forgot the one drink. I forgot. That's right. We got um, left here. The yeah, quality let's, let's go on to the green smoothie. No need for Not this. Yet? You're going to do the lecture first? The, the column detox drink, we forgot. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, you can, you can do it. It's easy. Here. Yes. I'll help you. Because when you were t talking about the... Um, you're going to put apple juice with yes. this? Yes. Oh, okay. Apple and... Okay, so go ahead, honey. You talk about it. Apple up. juice. Normally, when we're doing a cleanse, we do just the fresh, um, freshly juiced apple juice. But because, you know, for the sake of demo, we have um, just a bottled apple juice here. It's organic apple juice. And um, it's basically a colon detox drink. This is what we drink during a fast. Why is it important? Because, like I was saying, um, absorption starts right here. Uh, immune system starts right here also in the colon. So it's important that we keep the colon clean. So during a fast or during a cleanse, we do a colon detox drink. And what is, what is it? It's basically just a juice, and we have this powder that we use that has charcoal, slippery elm, flaxseed, and this acts like a broom in our colon. So during a fast, n your body is not accepting, it's not, no food is going through, then the body is focused on just cleaning out. So with this drink, it will go in there, it will expand actually because of the flaxseed and the slippery elm. After it sits there for a while, it will expand. And when you do your enema in the morning, it pulls it out. And out with that stuff comes out all the old stuff that's been sitting there for years and all the um, 
I tell oh, people the crayons. Oh, the not so good stuff. The crayons and the pennies you swallowed <laughs> in kindergarten are going to come out. <laughs> I I mean, <laughs> it's okay if it's just crayons and right, stuff. Right, I know, it's but it's a lot worse than that. It's a lot worse than that. So. <laughs> There's some other creatures that will come or out. Or what you can do with that is you put it in a blender. Out. You can Worms. put it in a blender and blend it on really, really low. Yeah, we've, yeah. Seen, people, we've seen people eliminate large intestinal worms. Worms that long come out. Big ones. Big. Oh, yeah. The intestinal worms can get up to 25 to 30 feet long in the intestine. Oh, yeah. And they, they, they eat your nutrients. So you really got to have a clean intestine because those little boogers, they'll drain all your energy. Anyways. And it's very common. We don't talk about that because it's like, oh, that's gross. But really, if you want to have good health, you got to get rid of those critters. And, th and they, they lodge in the intestine. And if you've ever eaten animal foods, you're going to yeah. have parasites. Guaranteed. So, okay, this is, this is psyllium husk and seed, flax seed, a slippery elm and charcoal, and bentonite clay, which is a pharmaceutical grade type of clay. No, just asking. Is that the question? What's the symptoms of parasites? Oh, You yeah. feel so tired, especially after eating. You feel so tired and sleepy. Yes, and grinding, teeth grinding. Grinding your teeth. At night. Um, always itchy, itchy in the nose, itchy in the ears. Itching, you know, like the, the parts, uh, some parts of your body always itching. Mm -hmm. Twitching even could be uh, signs of parasites. Yes. And always hungry. Always never, hungry. Never satisfied. Hungry, hungry, hungry all the time. Yes. Love Rabid appetite. Love uh, always looking for sweets. Yeah, sweets. Sweets, yes. I used to eat all kinds of sweet stuff. And then after we did a parasite cleanse and all that stuff came out, I'm like, People say, oh, you want to, no, 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 thanks. I'm, I'm not interested in sweet stuff anymore. I don't have that craving because the parasites make you crave sweet sugar, sugary stuff. And uh, so I don't crave any of that anymore after oh yeah, doing so a parasite So that's cleanse. the column detox drink. Yeah, so that acts as a broom to sweep all that stuff out of the intestine when you're fasting. So when you're fasting, we drink um, that drink four to five times yeah, a day. Yeah, to fill the intestine with this charcoal, which absorbs 10 times its weight in toxins mm -hmm. in the intestine. And it will also, the blood that's on the outside of the colon, it'll, it'll draw toxins from there and it just flush it out. When you do your enema, it all comes out. Yeah. Yep. Really effective. Okay. Okay. So that's that. So now what? Now we're going to do the green smoothie. Green right? smoothie. So okay. do the lecture first. Okay. All right. Okay, question. Yes. During fasting. During fasting. We do it during fasting. If you're doing a three-day fast, you take it for three days. If you're doing a five-day fast, you take it for five days. Yeah. But some people do that also, even during their regular eating days, just to clean out. Right. You but can. it's more effective when you're fasting because yes. your your um, colon is empty. Right. There's nothing in there. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about green smoothie, and with that. Um, it's good to start with this principle for the life of the flesh is in the blood so the Bible tells us that in Leviticus 17 11 so um, like modern medicine if they want to know what's going on Do with your health they, Food gloves? Okay, they check your blood right they do blood work they I check what's them. going on and they find out what's wrong with you so if we want to work on our health if we want to get well if we want to work on our um, on disease process that we have, let's start to focus on our blood also. And with that, we find out that the that in order to have good health, you have to feed your blood the best food. What do you think is the best food for our blood? With that picture, diagram right there, it shows what's the best food for our blood, which is plant chlorophyll. If you can see the molecular structure of the plant chlorophyll here on the left, compared to the blood there, it's exactly the same. With on, the only difference is magnesium is at the center of the plant chlorophyll, whereas at the blood, it's um, iron. So no wonder why the strongest and the most powerful animals are the ones that eat what? They eat grass, elephant, carabao. So I tell people, if you want to be as healthy as the carabao and live long like the carabao, and you can even tell when a carabao is old, right? 
You can't tell. You can't tell when they're old. Only the expert, the ones that work with them know. Uh, know which one, which carabao is old because it doesn't show in their face. Then eat like the carabao. <laughs> you don't have to go out there and eat grass out there, but we have um, grass for human. What are those? The green leafy vegetables. So chlorophyll aids in gastrointestinal problems. It promotes formation of hemoglobin and red blood cells. We have so many uh, testimonies of this where people come to us, they're anemic, they are, uh, they're re uh, extremely anemic. Some of them are ready to have transfusion and we tell them to drink green smoothie, which we're gonna demonstrate in a little while. And guess what? They didn't need transfusion anymore just by drinking green smoothie three times a day. It detoxifies toxins that cause cancer. No wonder why cancer is on the rise because the consumption of greens by us humans is very, very low. And if we do eat greens, it's especially in the Philippines, it's cooked dead greens. Cook it to death. <laughs> in the Philippines, they're really bad. Like talbos ng kamote, pecha, it's cooked to death. And so when we go over there and we give seminars, we show them that you can eat that raw. And they were like, huh? You can eat pet chai raw, and then we let them taste it. Now the lights come turn on, and then they say, oh, okay. So they start doing it. In fact, in our town, when we showed them how to uh, make green smoothie, now we cannot find Chinese malunggay in our town because everybody's carping up all the Chinese malunggay. They're, they're getting it before we, we get to it. So. So we told them, everybody needs to grow their own Chinese malunggay. That's not the regular malunggay. It's, it's the, yeah, it's Chinese. It's the long leaves. Yeah, we don't have that here, but they grow it in the Philippines. It's really nice. Really. I grow a whole bunch of that on our property. <laughs> It's actually, actually, we have a video on our YouTube channel called The Green Miracle. And our YouTube channel is Restoration to Eden Ministry. We'll show Do it on the slides. Do you have Chinese malunggay on there? But yeah, yeah. I, okay. I showed the actual plant okay. growing on our property. So you'll see that when we get to the end, she'll show the, our contact information. Okay. So anyways, go ahead. Okay, so it's beneficial in simulating calcium and other heavy minerals, which, you know, problem starts when you have imbalance of minerals. Fights infections. So that's what it looks like. It looks gross, yeah. but it's actually, because it has blended fruit with it, it tastes good. You don't really taste the green. It doesn't taste nasty, but the energy levels are unbelievable. I mean, we drink this stuff before we go play pickleball, and we're just like... And we have, you, you know, know, we have <laughs> kids when we do seminars at the churches, because that's why at the end of the seminar, we want to do a demo. That's the most important part, because we are, we humans are... Um, very visual, and we are, uh, to see is to believe. You won't believe until you see, and to taste is to believe. You have to taste it to be convinced. So we want people to see, and then we want people to taste, because we want people to be encouraged, and we want people to go home and do it. That's the key. That's the point. I mean, we're just not here so that we can share any information. We want you to be, to absorb this, digest it, eat it and then share it because we need to multiply the world is dying and we are put here for a reason we are put here in this world so that we can be the light out there in this dying world so sorry i'm not supposed <laughs> i'm not supposed to i'm not supposed to preach <laughs> i'm not the preacher sorry okay so Again, Thomas Edison said, the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. And so green smoothie is very, very important for nutrition. So here it is. We're going to do the recipes. And we have here blueberry delight. This one's my favorite. You have that there? It's over here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, next time. Yes. I know, the black and background is green, huh? Oh, <laughs> this is my favorite smoothie. I like to drink this in the morning. After having some hot water and lemon drink with cayenne, I like to, uh, uh, although my wife is more faithful in drinking that, but I'm, I really love this smoothie. It's really my favorite, so really good stuff. Where's our spoon at? Here, oh, okay. the, the big one? Yeah, we just need a smaller spoon. Can, can we have, yeah, can you give me a couple spoons, please? This one has Tablespoons, if you already. have them, tablespoon is better. If, you, if not, a plastic spoon will do. Okay, there we go. Oh, this thing kind of opens up weird. Huh? Oh, there you go, okay. Hey. All right, so, yeah, and we need a pitcher of water. Oh, is oh, this, oh, we got coconut water. Yeah, okay, no good, that's right, I remember. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to put is the coconut water. Um, this tastes a little bit better than the regular water. In the Philippines, we use fresh coconut juice, yeah. which we fortunately have a few trees left on our property after they cut them all down before they sold it to us. But anyways, we planted some. And then we're going to go ahead and put some bananas. These are frozen bananas that are somewhat melted, but they're still somewhat frozen, so they're going to be nice and chilled. And... Uh, We'll put a fresh, fresh banana open. as well. Just put them in there. Handful of blueberries. And this is why we're putting the fruit, we're to make it taste good. So if you just blend spinach with water, it's not going to taste that great. So we put the spinach in there. And then we're going to add some super greens, which is our additional supplement, which contains uh, barley grass. <coughs> Barley grass juice powder. Have you seen, you've seen rice, right? They call it palay in the Philippines. The rice grows to be about two inches. It's, it looks like wheat grass. You know, you've seen it in Jamba Juice. They got those flats of the grass. So when the grasses are in the milk stage about two inches high, they're highest in protein and minerals and vitamins in that milk stage before it actually grows up and starts to produce wheat or whatever it is. So when they cut that and then they juice it, then you get all the concentrated nutrients. So this is powder made from the juice. And then we also have um, alfalfa leaf, spinach leaf, oat straw, rose hips, orange and lemon peel, which are bioflavonoids, blueberry powder, maca root, and stevia for flavor. This is just an additional to your smoothie or to the juice that you drink. So we put a couple tablespoons in there just to max it out and get some additional stuff going on. See and then the we're gonna blend this up. Yes, the go ahead. First yeah. Thank the you. The first thing is the fresh one, the fresh. Right, Th this is second best. This yeah. is just an additional. First best. Yeah, so that's not the main thing. So we'll go ahead and put it on smoothie mode, which is nice. It speeds up after a minute here. And if we have some cups, we can serve some of this, because we're gonna make two. So we have cups. Cups, yeah, please. So now what the machine is doing is it is grinding up all the material for us, which is what would normally happen in the digestive tract. You're going to chew it up. You're going to swallow it. The stomach's going to grind it up some more. See, we don't absorb the fiber. We, we poop that out, right? But we're absorbing the nutrients. So this is pre-digested. That's why we can mix the fruits and the vegetables together because it's pre-digested. But if you're just eating fruit and vegetables, don't mix the two. You eat a fruit meal with grains or seeds or, or nuts or legumes, or you eat vegetables with the grains, the seeds, and the nuts of the legumes, okay? Um, so we don't want to mix those two, but in blending, it's okay because it's pre-digested. So we're going to serve this. We're going to pass it around. Face and it first. Yeah, we can put it in there first, and then you can maybe help. We'll, we'll just pass it around while we're Face while it. we're continuing to lecture. And, blend uh, and you can just go ahead. I'm sure that tastes good. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this, and then we're going to do the next smoothie, yeah. which I'll be right back. Which is the green. Right. Let me see. Let me see. Where's my... What did I do with that here? That's the next... Green smoothie, the green piña colada. 
which is basically, you know, pineapple, banana, and the kale. Kale, it's, um, they call it the king of the greens. So uh, we need to take in more of the kale because it's very, very good for you. Uh, there's coconut milk on that, so no need for... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you can... Yeah, it's okay. You can no. have some. Okay. So we're doing this next, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's switch. So use some kale. Okay, you got the green pina colada. All right. Yeah. So we're going to do... Uh, we're going to put some coconut milk first, or what? We can put the other stuff first. Okay. And just put we'll it put the bananas. You can Throw some bananas. And we'll put some... Fresh pineapple. Fresh bananas also. And some fresh banana. We're going to make a big picture of this. This is a really good smoothie too because <laughs> it tastes like pina colada. It's really nice. So, Again. yeah. No alcohol, right? Yeah, you do it. Cooking. This is the healthy stuff. This is the real stuff here. Okay, banana. Let's break that. And we'll put some coconut milk. And... Uh, and then we will still a little bit of chunky there. And we'll stick that maybe in there. Maybe mix it so you can get some of the juice. Yeah. Well, no, it's pretty mixed up, honey. It's just chunky. Yeah. We'll pour some in there. About half, no? Yeah. That's fine. We don't want too much. Okay. So, yeah, that, that doesn't look too good, does it? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, go ahead. And then we'll put the kale in there. And we'll dump some of the super greens on top of it. Let me get this here. Okay. Oh, that's wet already. Okay, we'll use this. A couple spoons of that. Okay, let's go again. Okay, we'll check the consistency. Wow, look at that. It actually mm. looks like pudding. Very green. Oh, that is fantastic. Look how green that is. Isn't that beautiful? Let me taste. Look at that. I'm going to put some, well, I want to taste some too. <laughs> Give me one. How's it taste? Is it good? That's Now, you could drink that every day, couldn't you? Right, she just tastes banana and blueberry. See. You don't even taste the greens. Isn't that amazing? And there's Same a lot of green stuff in there. Not only the leaves, but we have the additional powder, and it's all green, a lot of green. So let me taste this myself. This one's really thick. Yeah, you want to make it? Yeah, you, you want to add? We'll add a little bit of coconut water to it because it's a little too thick. It's almost like pudding, which is pretty good too. But we're gonna go ahead and do smoothies. Yeah, so. green pudding. Yeah, <laughs> green pudding. Okay, I'm sure that's fine. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to pour another pitcher here and then hold on to your cup because we're going to pass this around for everybody to taste. We have, uh, more cups. All right, there's more cups if you need another cup. Actually, the kale in this um, green smoothie was from... Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this. Uh, yeah, what else Dr. You got Renee's there? garden, so that's organic. Oh, nice. Wow, that's good. Renee. So yeah, the kale one probably it tastes garden. a little more green, but you don't really taste the greens too much. So, excuse me, Angel, where's the dog? So you can use different kinds of greens. You can, you can use lettuce. You can use even the colored. That would be good also. So any kind of greens, and with the fruit that offsets the green taste, the you know it will not smell like your yard, your your lawn um, mower. <laughs> With the fruit, so that's why we add the fruit. Okay, any question on the green smoothie? Yeah, 
not no. really because no you, know. you don't want to use raw mustard or yeah is it don't spicy that. that's just for cooking yeah that one yeah but the malunggay we used it in the philippines the round yep. malunggay you just don't use much of it yeah not too much yeah and malunggay in the philippines the little round one then we call it native malunggay because there's two kinds in the philippines uh, that particular herb is the equivalent of wheatgrass in the United States. So that herb is very, very effective in destroying cancer cells. So when we have cancer patients, we give them a lot of malungai. Uh, we blend it up with smoothies. We let them drink that. And it's very good. And we recommend they drink malungai tea, malungai soup, blend the malungai fresh, raw, really powerful stuff. But if you get too much of it, you know, I'll tell you something funny. This is true. The first time I learned about malungai, I looked it up on the internet, and I saw, wow, the Chinese have done studies on malungai, and it shows that it, it's, 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 you know, ten times more powerful than chemotherapy and all this wonderful stuff. And I was like, praise the Lord. So I put a whole bunch of stuff in there for my green smoothie, and I took a big handful of malungai leaves, and I put it in the blender, and I blended it up, and I poured it in my glass, and I went, shoo, and then I went, Bruh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was so hot coming out the other end. It was bad. I mean, you're not supposed to use a lot of it. Because I was thinking it was like, I didn't know anything about this stuff. I thought it was like spinach. You know, you put a handful or you put some lettuce, you know. And I put a whole handful of that stuff. You're only supposed to use about maybe two tablespoons of leaves, you know. But I put a big handle. I took branches. I was like pulling all this stuff off. And, and it, was, it was horrible. I, I regretted it deeply, trust me. So you got to be careful. It's a powerful herb, so you got to go easy on it. Yeah, anyways. Okay, but yeah, so true story. Like I said, I learned the hard way, but anyways. Any question? When you start, um, some things that you will notice when you start drinking green smoothie regularly, first of all, like now, you probably will feel a niacin rush. Yeah, your face could get your red. Your face, like, you feel like, you know, there's blood. Yeah, blood, right? Yeah, there's niacin From in From the green, yeah. right? Yeah. The green. So... Which is nothing to worry about. Your body is just happy. The, your cells are happy from all the vitamins and minerals from the greens. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that you will notice is that you will have better elimination. Yep. People that have problems with constipation or um, even chronic constipation, yep. once they start drinking green smoothies regularly, mm -hmm. then that problem goes away. That's right. Problem with... Hemoglobin uh, being low, low or blood, anemia, yeah. mm -hmm. then <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> you see, our society is set up so that you don't go. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and no wonder why we're a nation of constipation. All right, so this is our uh, contact information. Uh, our YouTube channel is called Restoration to Eden Ministry. Ministry is in the name, so... Um, there are some other ministries that call themselves Restoration to Eden. Mm -hmm. That's not us. We are Restoration to Eden Ministry uh, on back YouTube. To Eden. No, that's and um, so that's the name of our YouTube channel. Our email address is steps to Eden at yahoo.com. Uh, phone number is 916 620 4809. This is our permanent phone number. Uh, even when we're in the Philippines, you, we can receive phone calls at this phone number, and it's not, it's a local U.S. number, but it goes through the internet. 916-476-9772. We also receive text messages there, but we cannot receive photos through text message with this phone number, okay? Uh, if you want to contact us through Messenger, James Kirtley and Daryl Kirtley on Facebook, and you can look us up. So um, anyways, so any other questions before we wind it up for tonight? Um, there's a video I highly recommend. There's a series of health lectures that we did called Abundant Life Health Seminar. It includes uh, a green smoothie and a raw food demo. It's called Abundant Life Health Series. It's on our YouTube channel. It is a uh, playlist. So if you watch Health is Wealth, which is the first video, uh, the next seven videos will come up afterwards. So it's a whole series. It goes through the laws of health, you know, the New Start program, and then we have a demo where Daryl demonstrates some stuff, just kind of like what we did today. That's all on video. And then... Uh, we also have another video that you definitely want to watch about green smoothies, and it will show you the picture of the green malungai, the Chinese malungai. It's called The Green Miracle. That's the name of the video. 
and it talks about green smoothies, and there's a testimony about a woman that was nine months pregnant that was extremely anemic, who drank the smoothies three times a day and did not have to transfuse blood when giving birth, and gave birth to a healthy baby boy, and her life was totally changed by drinking green smoothies as a medicinal dosage before giving birth. So anyways, so yeah, um, if you want to contact us, you have any questions, um, if you're interested in doing a cleanse program, just let us know. Uh, we are open for that. Like I said, we're leaving at the end of this month. Uh, we're scheduled to leave October 30. We will be in the Philippines until December 7. Um, and we have our evangelistic series coming up November 9 through 19. So please keep us in your prayers. And uh, we need a lot of prayer. We're going to be in, in Lopez Quezon, which is about uh, about an hour and a half to two hours drive south of where we live, isn't it, honey? I don't know. I think it's about two hours, <laughs> maybe a little further. Uh, I'm not. I- we've been there many times, but I don't remember how far it is because we don't go there very often. The right. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we have. It's an hour drive just to Lusaina City, and that's where we get the southbound expressway going there. So yeah. But anyways, pray for us. Uh, we need prayer. And uh, we're hoping and praying that we can be a blessing to the people there in the Philippines. And we will be spending the winter here. We'll be here December, January. Um, And so if you're interested in learning more, we're available as God opens the way. And uh, so anyways, any other questions before we close? Yes, please. Yeah, we use use hydrotherapy, yes. Very um, effect, yeah, actually, what we shared today is like a condensed version of like a whole one-week series that we do on medical missionary training, and um, we don't really. Let me put it this way: we're not trained uh, professionally in any of this stuff. We just learned from other people, uh, people who were trained. We learned from them. Uh, we're not uh, college graduates. We're not educated. You know what I mean? But we use what God gives us, and then we just share it. So that's what we do. Um, and everything we shared here, we learned from the Lord and from other people that God used and God taught. So um, some of them educated, some not. Um, so when it comes to hydrotherapy, we use hydrotherapy and have used hydro- hydrotherapy for many years. Um, we're, we're not really skilled in telling you all the details of the do's and don'ts of hydrotherapy, although we've learned a lot. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a hydrotherapy expert. But we do use hydrotherapy mm-hmm. in our treatments. Very, very We do hot and cold fomentations. We do steam bath. We do hot foot baths. We do cold frit and mixion rubs. We do wet sheet packs, which are very effective. And uh, we use that for people who are insomniacs. They can't sleep at night. Um, and cancer patients, we put them in a wet sheet pack uh, to boost the immune system. So we do use hydrotherapy. And we didn't talk about it because... I mean, w- we could stay here till, you know, <laughs> midnight, right? <laughs> Only one, one thing I request, don't fall out the window like you Eutychus, right? Because <laughs> I'm not Paul, you know? <laughs> Anyways, but you get the point. But that was a good question. Yes, we use hydrotherapy. Yeah. All the natural modalities that are mentioned in Spirit of Prophecy, we use. Yeah. So how did you like the green smoothie? Was it good? Now, now give the green smoothie challenge. Okay, so here's the, here's the green smoothie <laughs> challenge. So we want to encourage you to drink at least a glass bigger than this, actually. A nice tall glass of a green glass smoothie. A, a glass or two. E- every day for the next week. Just every day for the next week. Get, it, get yourself a nice blender. It doesn't have to be a Vitamix. It can be an Oster. It can be Hamilton Beach. It can be a cheapy blender from, a no-name blender from the thrift store. It doesn't matter. Blend up those greens and drink that stuff every day for a week. And I guarantee you that you will make this a part of your lifestyle program for probably the rest of your life because you're going to feel more energy. You're going to sleep better at night. You're going to feel better. You're going to be happier. Believe it or not, it will affect your mood. It's amazing what chlorophyll will do in the human body and what it does to our emotional well-being. It's amazing. And so we've seen people uh, actually who have gone through a cleanse. They were frowning. They weren't smiling at all. And on the third day, they were just laughing their heads off as we were talking about different experiences with cleansing and funny things that happen. And it just changes your attitude. As you clean out your body and your body becomes more nutritionally um, satisfied and you, your body becomes cleaner, your thoughts are clearer, you sleep better at night, you're happier, and you can hear God's voice louder than ever before. That's the main benefit, which is absolutely amazing. I remember when we were on raw food for five years, 
it was astounding. The experiences, it was just like incredible. So imagine, I, I have to sleep seven, seven and a half to eight hours a night. Otherwise, I feel beat up, which is like a lot of people. Some people, as they get older, they only sleep five or six hours. But when we were on Raw, we were sleeping five hours, and we're awake, and we're just flying with energy all day long. So, you know, the more raw, the merrier. You don't have to eat a 100% raw diet, but the more raw food you eat in your diet, the better. Mm -hmm. Eat your raw food first and then your cooked food and do your green smoothies in between or an hour or so before you eat your meal and it will change your life for the better. Okay? So, at this time, I guess we'll close. Did you want to have any closing comments? Yes, please do. drop the envelope in the well or give it to me and I will get it to you. Okay, yeah, I, I just have a, just, just so you know, an address? Yeah, yes, yes, you can, you can mail a check to 17...